And we welcome you to Golden West Field on the campus of Golden West Colleges today. SportsNetUSA.net presents Golden West Rustler Football. We have a non-conference tilt between the Golden West Rustlers and the Vikings of Long Beach City. It's sensational Saturday afternoon to you wherever you are. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of you. Rashawn Haylock alongside my longtime broadcast partner, Andrew King. The Vikings won the toss and have elected to receive. Putting it on the tee for the wrestlers will be Manny Cuevas. Right, Andrew King will enter in just a moment to give you his thoughts, folks. Back to receive it for Long Beach. Patrick Lee and Elijah Bynum. This one will be taken by Bynum two yards deep in the end zone. A stiff form, but a nice tackle in the open field on the special teams by the Rustlers. Making the stop there was number 20, the defensive back, Detson Sonatas. Andrew, is, we talk about some of your keys to the game. Well, keys to the game are always time possession, uh, third down conversion, and uh, turnover battle. But I want to talk about the quarterback here, uh, Grant Lowry, six foot. Six foot even. He's on the, on the season. He's 109 for one, 109 for 198. He's had 55.1 per, uh, percentage in the season. He's thrown for 1,390 yards so far. Lowry, back to pass over the middle, caught 25 yard line and down at the 30. Pickup of 18 there and a first down. First down, Long Beach. Yeah. Look for the Vikings to get their running back, Elijah Bynum, going here. 6'2", 205. Lowry on the season. 1,370 yards, 12 touchdowns coming into today. They go to the ground for the first time. And it's going to be a pickup of about four there by Elijah Bynum. Bynum very dangerous when he gets the ball in his hands. Product out of Buena Park High School. He's big, strong, and he can run a little bit. 6'2", 205. We'll set up the lineups for you in just a moment as Lowry checks over to the sideline for the play. Second down and six from the 33-yard line of Long Beach. They go to the ground one more time, but not any running room at all there that time as the Swarming defense of the Rustlers is there to take down the ball ca carrier, Ice Valle. Empty formation for Long Beach City. Third down and eight. Lowry steps up and sacked. Balls out. Rustlers think they have it. And coming out of the pile with it is Silas Collins. So a turnover, a much needed turnover there forced by the Rustlers. Silas Collins with the fumble recovery and Golden West will have prime field position to start this drive. Number 26, Silas Collins on the fumble recovery. Rustlers will take over first down and 10 at the Long Beach 30 yard line. Joe Pyle. Puts Smith in motion, they give it to Smith on an end around. Smith finds a little bit of a crease and he gets it ahead to the 30. 26 yard line, a pickup of four. Pyle adjusting the play at the line of scrimmage. Tavai goes in motion, they throw it to him in the flat. And as Andrew King would call it, the turf monster eats him up there that time as he's down at the 30-yard line. So he's going to lose about three there. Yeah, running to buy in motion from left, left to right, 
from left of the quarterback pile, left shoulder, trying to get motion, trying to get that pile C with his man, man or zone coverage. That was the ball over. It didn't quite uh, get too many. It wasn't very successful play there. Third and nine. Vikings showing pressure. And there's some movement up front. Should be offsides or encroachment. Some going movement by the right guard, Genesis Kololo. Yeah, but the blitzer was the blitzer on the on that side was coming, and he stepped way over the line. It was a little delayed though by Kololo. We'll see if they give it to him. I see what you're saying, Andrew, but ah, oh. it's going to be a false start. Ah, oh, wow. I I that's I okay. I don't I don't like that call, Rashawn. I I I agree with it just for the simple fact that Mike Davis, our white hat here. This afternoon, Kalolo moved. The guy did go across the, the, the line of scrimmage. Kalolo moved, but his movement was delayed. So it wasn't like he was drawn off by the defender. Meanwhile, here's Pyle to Deese on the outside. A first down and more at the 15-yard line. Yeah, a little out route from Deese, about 10 yards down the field. Pyle puts it right on the money, first down. Pickup of 20 there on the play from Pyle to Deese. And it's a first down, Golden West. Pyle looking to get right back into it. Nearly another fall start. Russell's going to break there. Meanwhile, Rhino Tavai. Guys bouncing off of him. Tavai carrying defenders with him near the end zone. They mark him out at the six, however. A pickup of nine there for Rhino. I want to let uh, all the fans know that. Uh, uh, red zone conversion for touchdown percentage is 33%, uh, so one out of three. Hopefully this is the one out of the three that they score here early in this game, set the tone for the game here. Second down and one. Pyle adjusting the formation at the line of scrimmage. Seven seconds left on the play clock. They fake the end around to Smith. Tavai goes over right guard. And he's down at the five. It's going to be close to a first down. We're not going to give it to him. That's interesting. Yeah, Russell's running some motion here. That's just to uh, let Powell know what kind of defense he's looking at. If a man goes with on, on, on the other side, that shadows him on the other side, then means, basically usually means man defense. Three receivers to the top of the screen. Powell going to sneak it himself. And that Powell moves the quarterback. As a helmet pops off for the Vikings, going to be a first down for Golden West, having to come off of the field for Long Beach is Bubba Valera, the big defensive tackle for the Vikings. That's not someone you want to come out the field this uh, come out the field this time of the game. I mean, as far as where the wrestlers are, first and goal from the three. Tavai gets the carry, tries to bounce it outside, but that defense is swarming, and it is there. Adrian Hernandez leading the charge there. He also had some help in Abadayo Saremakan, and he's a guy who we talked about off air, Andrew. Big number 42 for Long Beach City is going to be a handful for this Golden West offensive line. They had their hands full last week with the Thomas boys of Cerritos. Saremakan can really get after it. Yeah, he's got five sacks for... Uh... 32 yards, uh, lost 32 yards, uh, opposing teams. Pyle on second and goal, he throws it, and it's off the hands of Ratzliff. Pass is incomplete. Brings third down. That's what pressure can do. You don't have to always get a sack, Rashawn. If you get pressure, you can throw the ball. You get quarterback throw an errant throw. And the, if the ball was thrown to the outside, he, that's a touchdown. He was thrown to the inside, and that's where the defender was, and he knocked it, basically went off the out of Ratzliff's hands. Look down here to Deese, one-on-one -on -one down one -on -one here. One-on-one coverage with Deese. If Pyle wants it on third and go, he looks that way. Deese on a slant, incomplete. Coverage was there by Cross Poyer. Guy Offer also came up from his safety spot. Not sure if Davis felt or Deese felt those footsteps or not. Ball falls incomplete. That touchdown was there. In and out of his hands. It was a body catch. You got to catch it out here, out in front of him. He tried to body catch it. I know it's hard to do. How much did offer it, though? 
maybe have an impact on that play. Oh, yeah. It, 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 as Deese looks up, he sees 24 coming yeah, at him. Absolutely. Could have been a big-time shot there. Russell's to try a field goal. This one from 23, and it is good. So the field goal is good from Saul Rodriguez. So the wrestlers turn the turnover into three points. And they lead it three to nothing here in the early going on SportsNetUSA.net. Fans, don't forget, wrestlers football on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim, where service and parts is open seven days a week for your convenience. Check out the alignment, brake, and oil change specials. On the web at MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com, located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. Rashawn Haylock alongside Andrew King and our fantastic SportsNetUSA.net crew. Rustlers force a turnover on a sack fumble. Fumble recovered by All Silas right, Collins. They turn it into three points. Now, again, they're only 33% uh, red zone uh, touchdown percentage, so. Bynum going to field this one at the five. Bynum at the 30. And a nice shoestring tackle there made on the special teams by Devon Anderson. Yeah, Bynum 6'2", 205. He's got six touchdowns. He's got 65 attempts for 300, 391 yards. Averaging per game uh, about 98 yards per game. His long run, longest run of the season is 28 yards. He's lost two fumbles. Fumble lost two fumbles. He's averaging six yards a carry. He's in there in the pistol, and there's going to be movement against... Long Beach, it appears. Here's Mike Davis. Yeah. Damon Roberts doesn't agree with the call, and a lot of folks up here in the press box don't necessarily agree with it either. First down and five. Second penalty of the game for the Rustlers. Both have been to the five-yard variety. Here's Bynum, breaks one tackle, but not going to get away from the second as he's able to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job there defensively by the Rustlers. Avery Jones coming in there and making a play. The wrestler's wearing black. I don't know how that's going to be on the field. And that's not too hot in here in the shade, but on the field wearing, wearing a black, it's got to be a little bit of concern for Chris Lowry Mitchell. with time. He lost it. And this one's going to be out of bounds. And a late flag is going to come in near the quarterback. And I can't help but to think this has to be against the wrestlers. Silly Utah got in there, and a couple of Vikings are having some words with them. Russell's just need to regroup and play defense, not worry about it. It was a, a silly a silly penalty to take, but you just gotta, gotta move on. This will move Long Beach into Rustler territory. On that offensive line for the Vikings, Shama Tapua, Alberto Perez, Steven Almada, Mitchell K, and Alex Dalpe from left to right. Vikings without their starting left tackle, Jacob Finiaganafo who was ejected in last week's loss at Canyons. So unable to play today. Play action over the middle, incomplete. Ball goes off of the hands of Cedric Bird, the wide receiver. The quarterback, of course, is Lowry Bynum. You've seen him already, the wide receivers. Jason Coplazer, Cedric Bird, Jabari Minix. Second and 10 from the 47 yard line. Rustlers had over 100 yards of penalties last week, much to the chagrin of Nick Mitchell. They dump it out to the far side in the flat, a big time hit made on the ball carrier, Colin Monaco, 
but the big hit was made on Gaiman Howard. And Howard is in there getting the start at safety today. Both teams early having a player have their helmet pop off. <laughs> Five yard pickup for Colomonico. Third and five. Lowry looking up top and incomplete. It's going to bring up a fourth down. Let's see if the Vikings keep the offense on the field. They're going to elect to punt it. We mentioned Gaiman Howard. He's getting the start at safety today in replace of Desmond Posse. A lot of missed assignments, missed tackles from the Rustlers as a unit defensively last week. And Howard, although young, a little bit more of a sure tackler, so they're hoping to maybe sure up some of the tackling issues they had a week ago by putting him in there in the starting lineup. And it looks like it's going to be a delayed game charge, too. I would, I would, de I would uh, decline it if I was Nick Mitchell. Tanner Carcamo, the punter. Yeah, come in this game. He's got 12 punts for 427 yards. He's got he's got three inside the 20 and one touchback. His average is about 35 yards. Markel Johnson at the nine going to field this one. Makes a couple of guys miss, but only gets it for a gain of three there. First down, Russell. 8-16 to play here on sportsnetusa.net. First quarter action, Golden West with the ball and a three-point lead. Pyle still in there at a quarterback. Looking, has Deese on a slant. Deese with some room, second level down at the 32-yard line. 30-yard pickup there from Pyle to Deese. Just a nice nice pitch and catch, the slant, slant route. Pyle puts it right in Deese's hands from left, from left to right. Nice game for the wrestlers. First down. Tavai off the right side, and Sarimakan is in there to make the stop as he grabs him right around the ankles. Had some help in there from Cole Marmer. Wrestlers offensive line, Nick Sia Tunu'u, Brian McCann, Ofoloto Kuma, Jerry Garcia, Tavita Sagapolu. Leishan Askew has been battling an ankle injury. Not sure how much of him we'll see today. Amata Tavai, the linebacker, Deese Smith, White, and Mouton, the wide receivers. Pyle. Fakes the handoff, going to keep it himself. Joe Pyle slides at the 41 yard line. Nine yard pickup for the Rustlers QB and close to a first down. The inside veer on that play there. Pyle climbs under center. And he may have gotten the first down with that second and third effort. Yeah. But that initial push was there by the Long Beach defensive front. But Pyle actually ends up picking up about three there on the sneak. So another first down for Golden West. First and ten. Kind of reminds me of the Reggie Bush push for Matt Leonard in the Hunter Dame. Pile play fake, looking. Dees caught, 30 yard line, a couple of flags come in. A first down there as the Rustlers get inside of Viking territory. Yeah, Dante Patterson on, on, on the coverage there. See if he gets a penalty here. 
two, two, three flags, two or three flags on the field. My, my could be multiple penalties. That would be on Dante Patterson. That'd be a five-yard penalty on that first down, but obviously Russell's Nick Mitchell are going to take, take, take the, the play in the game there. 32-yard pickup. Deese now with three catches for 72 yards. That's, that's pretty productive, huh? <laughs> yeah, too many players on the field for the Russers. Sheldon White runs off. 6.15 to play here in the first. They sent Smith in motion. They hand it off to Tavai instead. Right side, Tavai. Tavai with the carry. Gain of one yard down to the 34. Cross Poyer making the stop. Ceremican, Cody Lout, Bubba Valera, Adrian Hernandez, the front four. Two linebackers, Jawan Barker and Darian Bunton. The secondary, the corners, DJ Patterson, Malik Welch, and the safeties, Guy Alford, Cross Poyer, and Justin Prince. Four. Long Beach. Pile, play fake, looking right side, looking in zone, incomplete. Welch got his hand in there and batted away as he was looking once again in the direction of Derek Deese. So last week we saw Deese play a little bit more in the slot for the first time this season. This, this week, they're kind of exploiting a mismatch on the outside. And for the first time, really, we're seeing Deese take advantage of that 6-4 frame. Well, Patterson on the other side, number two, he's only, he's a freshman. He's 5'8", uh, 170, so that's a very good matchup. 5'8", five, five, to 6-4. Powell going to roll this time. Stops, pops, end zone, rats left! Touchdown, Rustlers! A nice roll up, roll out from Powell. Runs left, throws the ball deep, touchdown to left. 24 yard pitch and catch from Powell to Ratsliff. And the Rustlers lead this one by nine with the point after to come. Rodriguez in to attempt the point after. Kick is up and through. Rustlers 10, Vikings nothing as you're watching Golden West Rustler football right here on sportsnetusa.net. Rashawn Haylock here alongside Andrew King and our entire sportsnetusa.net crew. How about Joe Pyle rolling, stopping, getting his feet set, knowing he's gonna take a big time shot and delivering that ball to the back of the end zone, Andrew. Six, sometimes six points is worth it, right? <laughs> sometimes you pay the price. The good ones do that. All the good ones take the shot to get six points, right? Get the first down. So obviously six. it's more rewarding you get, you get six points in first down. But, you know, I'm sure Joe Pyle will be the first one to tell you. He'll take that every time if he gets touchdown. Pyle now five of eight for 93 yards in this first quarter and a touchdown. Rodriguez will put it on the tee. And the boss returned to the 15 yard line. Bird getting the return there. How about that drive for the Rusters? 88 yards, Andrew. Yeah. It's one of the better drives we've seen of them all season. It's not like they had a, a, a sufficient amount of help in the, in the form of penalties from the Vikings. No. They manufactured that drive all the way down the field. Let's see if the defense gets some stops here. And let, let's caution folks. Remember last year at the vet, they jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead against this Long Beach City team. Lowry takes the snap over the middle, incomplete. It's behind the back of the intended wide receiver, Cola Monaco. Brings up a second down.
Kalawanako, six, he's 5'9", 165, he's got 17 receptions, 200, 237 yards, he's averaging 59.3 yards a game. Here's Mike Wilson, and Wilson changing fields, coming back near side, and out just shy of midfield. Sorry about that, partner. Lowry completes the pass to number one, Mike Wilson. Runs out of bounds at the 48-yard line. First down, Long Beach. Pickup of 33 there for Wilson. They throw it out to Wilson one more time. And he's not able to get around the corner there, JT Thomas. There's a flag on the play. Got a flag here. We're going to figure out what it is here. It's got a false start or something. Offsides. Defense. Offsides. Don Anderson, number 34, freshman, 6'4", 235, out of Anaheim, Western High School. Takes the penalty for the wrestlers. Sixth penalty of the game for the wrestlers. Not good. Play fake, Lowry quickly, and that one batted away. Nice job there by Alex Barnes. As Lowry tried to sneak that one past the Rustler defender unsuccessfully. Look for the defensive line for the Rustlers to start putting their hands up to knock those balls down, Rashawn. Second and five from the Rustler 47 yard line. Lowry in the flat pass is going to be caught. But only able to get back to the line of scrimmage is Money Mason, the freshman out of Los Angeles. Brings up a third down and five. <laughs> yeah, freshman 5'7", 172. Third and five, empty set for the Vikings. We have a timeout. And timeout going to be taken from that far sideline. It'll be a, a Golden West timeout. So it's their first charge timeout of the half. They'll have two left. As they lead this one 10 to nothing here in the first quarter. 350 remaining. A lot of youth on this team, especially in the linebacker position. It hasn't not a linebacker on this team that has taken a snap last season for the Rusters. And especially took a blow when that, the, that one player who had some experience, David Aldapo, went down with that torn ACL. And so that has been a point of emphasis with just so much youth there, so many missed assignments, uh, wrong gaps. And so obviously the cum communication has to be ever press it there and you gotta imagine that's what that last time yeah, I was yeah, about. Yeah, but later later this year they're gonna you hope you're hoping I'm sure Nick Mitchell's hoping they're gonna they're gonna come together, they're gonna grow together and, and next year it's gonna pay dividends this year for next year because they have that cohesiveness hopefully going into next year. But obviously we'll worry about this year now. But yeah, yes. Gotta get your linebackers on, on point. Wind picking up here a little bit. Lowry tried to go back shoulder to Wilson too high and incomplete. Lowry now three of seven with that last incompletion and re-enter the punter, Carcamo. Markel Johnson will park at his own 10. The words out obviously on Markel Johnson. He just has not been able to have the touches in the punt return game as he had the first couple of weeks. He's gonna fair catch this one 
at the 16-yard line. Nearly a kick-catch interference there, yes. Andrew. Yes. But no call. So that's where the Rustlers will start it. All of a sudden, having, having a long field to get a touchdown isn't an issue, right? Knock on wood, right? <laughs> Don't forget later tonight, Fullerton College football action returns here to sportsnetusa.net as the Hornets travel to Moore Park. 6 p.m. kickoff, audio only broadcast as our esteemed colleagues Mark Palovich, Corey Nalen will have the call for you from Moore Park. Don't want to miss that one right here on sportsnetusa.net. And don't see that every day. Looked like the center there forgot the snap count. Everybody moved but the ball. <laughs> Sometimes the centers are worried about alignment and getting getting his uh, cohorts on the line, uh, their assignments. It seems every game, Rashawn, broken record, seems like every game, though, they're playing uh, the wrestlers always playing their opponent, plus they're playing the penalties are always going to give up. Powell takes a snap. Stretch play to the left. That's Valdez there getting the carry. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage to pick up a five there. And Valdez was a bright spot for these wrestlers last week in the loss at Cerritos. Provided kind of a change of pace to the bruising style of play that Rhino Tavai brings. So second and 10. Pyle going to keep it himself. Joe Pyle dives at the 25 yard line. Close to a first down there as Pyle picks up about eight. Third and two. Maybe a short three. 229 left. Valdez around the outside. First down and more. Tavon Valdez bumped out of bounds at the 35 yard line. 10-yard pickup. He only needed two, Andrew King, but you see the bursts and the locks just flowing as 28 <laughs> carries the ball there. Yes, it's great. Nice, nice, a nice run on the left-hand side. Uh, borderline could have been, could have been a ticky tack. Late hit. Yeah, ticky tack, and I'm glad, I'm glad they didn't call it. Although it would have been makeup call for all these less than stellar calls earlier in the game against the wrestlers. Out as a freshman out of Alpharetta, Georgia, under two to play first quarter. Dances at the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle, tries to bounce to the outside. But he's going to be tackled there by Cross Poyer. Poyer, the St. John Bosco product. He played on both sides of the ball for head coach Jason Negro. Primarily used on the offensive side, however. I asked Brett Peabody earlier this week, and he thought of playing him on offense. He was like, no, he's too good at safety. We love him there. And he's been a key cog to this Viking defense. Valdez in the flat this time. Tries to juke, but a nice open field tackle made there on that far sideline. No gain on the play as Shelton makes the open field stop. I'm going to make a prediction, Rashawn. They're going to run that same action later in the game. And the Vikings defense is going to suck up to it. And they're going to try to throw over the top to Deese or Xavier Smith. Later in the game, I think they're setting that up. They're going to take their loss, take their two-yard gain, four or five times a game, and then they're going to they're going to hit, hit it, try to hit it deep later in the game. Pile pressure coming over the middle, caught. Mouton tries to get to the outside. He's going to be close to the sticks, but he may be a little short of that first down marker. Maybe a little too much dancing there. He just goes straight ahead. He yeah. comes up with the first down. Too much east and west needs to go north and south. Uh, you know what, Sean? Watch a punt here. I watch a excuse me, watch a fake here. You're up ten. 
37, James Baldwin III, out to punt for your wrestlers. Watch the fake here. Cedric Berg going to receive the punt. Baldwin always a threat to fake whenever he touches it. And that one was going to be a fake, but the whistle blew. <laughs> and the wrestlers just blew their cover. So you're right on top of it, Andrew, but they're going to have to kick this one now because they called their, they showed their bluff as the whistle blew for the end of the first quarter. So after one, Rustlers 10, Long Beach nothing as you're watching Long Beach. Rustlers take on Long Beach Vikings take on the Rustlers here right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Fans, we have a brand new partner here on SportsNetUSA.net. And Golden West Rustler football, Raisin Canes, always fresh, never frozen chicken fingers. Get a large sweet tea made fresh every day. Raisin Cane Chicken Fingers, 3150 Harbor Boulevard in Costa Mesa. Make sure you go check them out. I'll tell you what, it's extremely worth it. Raisin Cane. So they flip fields. Avery Jones upset at the long snapper there that time, saying, why did you snap it? You blew our cover. So now Baldwin probably going to have to kick those. You're not that that bold to run a fake twice in a row, are you? No, Baldwin put a boot into this one, and boy, did he ever. This one going to go out of bounds. 27-yard line. Yeah, that, that was a mistake, kind of a bonehead mistake, blowing your cover like you said. You don't want to do that. But I guess because he didn't hear a whistle, they, they always tell you, right, play the whistle. And he already, I guess he didn't hear it or something. I guess because no one lifted up, like they, no one took a break, you know what I mean? Like, because they just kept, he said, well, I'm going to keep going. I guess that's what happened because no one paid him to do the whistle. They go to the ground for the first play of this drive. Try that right side and pick up four. Does Elijah Bynum? Elijah Bynum's a good, good back. They got to get him going. Usually get him in the passing game, but they can get him running too. Actually, mark him short, so he only picks up two there. Second down and eight. Play fake over the middle. Caught Bird. Breaks out of one tackle, but falls at the 40-yard line. Yeah, if, if, Bert, if Cedric Bird get, gets, gets through that tackle, he's gone. He's gone to the races. That stops a string of three straight incompletions for Lowry. First and 10 Vikings from their own 40. Out of the pistol. They give it to Bynum once again. Up the gut, Bynum. Thrown down to the turf by Rez McKinney, but not after a five-yard pickup. Yeah, Rez McKinney on the McKinney. stop there. He just threw, just threw him down there. <laughs> McKinney at that will linebacker position that had belonged to David Aldapa before his season-ending injury. And that will spot has been troublesome ever since Aldapa has gone down. Bynum just finds a way there that time. He was stopped initially, turns nothing into a seven-yard gain into Rustler territory. Usually the weak side linebacker will uh, have to take the, usually sometimes take the slot receiver where on the other side, the strong side, the strong side linebacker and the strong side you play the tight end. So it's a little bit di obviously different uh, a style of a player you need to play those uh, different positions on, on linebackers. First and 10 at the Rustler 49. This time, nothing stopped in the backfield is Bynum, and it's McKinney getting there once again. Looks like Rez is getting revved up. <laughs> Loss of four there by Bynum. 
He absolutely is getting revved up. <laughs> You you, and you you kind of called him out there on that last play. I think he heard you and will decide to make an impact. He heard you say, Will linebacker. Oh, that's my spot. Picks up the TFL. Lowry on second and long. Oh, what a grab by Wilson. Are you kidding me? One armed, he cuffed it with Johnson draped all over him. Ball down at the 37. 16 yard pickup. Lowry. Wilson again at the 20 and going to be pushed out of bounds. Russell's playing this bend, but don't break defense. Hopefully they can tighten it up. Now. The Vikings are 64% at red zone touchdown percentage, so much better, almost double what the Russells are. They're basically uh, get a touchdown every, every two times out of three. Lowry on a slant, and he overshot his intended receiver. Lowry's He's looking for Bird there. Well, on that, on that pass, Rashawn, Lowry's told to throw it to a spot, and the receiver's supposed to get to that spot. I mean, he did, it looked like he overthrew it, and I guess he did, but also at the same time, you've got to think, Sometimes they just tell a quarterback, throw it to that spot, and the receiver's supposed to get there. Lowry, local product out of Huntington Beach, Edison High School. Chargers took an L, a tough L last night, down in South Orange County to San Clemente. Here's Lowry on second down. Wilson caught, dots the eye, out of bounds, and a first down. What a half Wilson is having. He didn't get the start today. But he's come off the bench and been a factor. They look to him again on a fade caught. Touchdown Long Beach City. As Mike Wilson put it on a show here. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Andrew. Wilson goes up and gets yeah, it. Yeah, throws a fade to the left, a near side. That's usually where they go, so usually where they go. Five-yard touchdown catch by Wilson. Long Beach City on the board. Extra point by Del Gadillo is good. So Long Beach within three as we hit 11.26 to play in this first quarter. But how about that drive there by Lowry and Wilson? Well, I like all that drive. I actually like what, what they're doing. They're, they're not just going past happy. They're actually staying with the run to keep the uh, Russell's defense honest. I think that's a good thing. They're not running the ball a little bit instead of getting too pass happy. Wilson with three catches for 32 yards on that drive including the touchdown grab as he gets the Vikings within three here. to the end zone and Baldwin thought about running it out. Johnson says, hold up, partner. So now it's a time for this Russell offense to see if they can try to come up with an answer here. Regain some of that magic of that long drive early in the game they got the, the touchdown. If I'm Coach Mitchell, Rashawn, I'm just telling the guys, just play our game. We got a game plan, work the game. Work the plan. We planned our work all week. Let's work. You know, let's, let's work our plan. You plan your work, and then you work your plan during the game. So. Go, 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 go. 
We got a new quarterback, John Buxa. He's going to keep it himself on the ground, and Buxa with the carry up to the 29 yard line. So we were told we would see both quarterbacks here today. As Buxa played well last week as he came on in relief, but not necessarily enough to take the starting job away. What's that saying? You have two quarterbacks, you have how many quarterbacks? You have none. No, no quarterbacks. Second and six for Buxa and the Rustlers. And this one's gonna be incomplete. Deese, the intended receiver. Coverage on the play there by Malik Welch. Yeah, Welch, Welch got, got a little close there. To pass interference, but he's letting play, which is good. Just be consistent. Buxa on third and six. Pressure coming. He rolls away from it. Buxa, he's got some wheels. Open field tackle there by Shelton, but a nice first down run there by Buxa. Down at the 38 yard line. Yeah, Buxa drops back, doesn't see anything, goes left and spins and then comes, comes around right for a first down. It's almost like it was designed. If, it's not, if your first read's not there, go ahead and just take off and try, try to get almost like a run pass option where you look for the pass and then run the draw, quarterback draw. First and 10 from their own 38. Dangerous pass there. Shelton was all over that. He nearly picked that one off. Kevin Pooster on the, on the stop there. Nine forty one left in this first half. Sheldon White in motion. Takes it on the end of round. White to the forty one. You got uh, Coach Mitchell being a defensive uh, coach, my coach. He likes to run the ball and protect his defense, but I think they need to start. I know there's a little wind going on right now. We're always at the beach, but I think they need to throw the ball a little more here, be a little more aggressive. Third and eight. Just five seconds left on the play clock. Russell's got to hurry. They snap it with two. Buxa. Pass caught in the slot there, Ratzliff. But he only gets about six, and they needed eight. Call me crazy, partner. I think they faked that. They got fake, even though they showed it, they could just, there's different versions of a fake, so. You can see the, you can hear the fans, visiting fans saying, watch the fake. Baldwin says, I got your fake. Big time kick there and it's bobbled, oh, but picked up there. And getting it to the 15 yard line is the punt returner Bird. Didn't he call a fair catch? He did, but since it was bobbled, If you muff it, it should be with the ball, unless the, okay, well. He, I mean, he muffed it and recovered it. I, it's a good point you bring up. But He did call fair catch, and, and to our right is the Rustler coaching booth, and they're discussing that right now. But the reason why I let it go live is because give, give the give the punting team a chance to recover the ball. The officials are talking about it right now, too. It looks like they may take this one back. I would imagine why they let, let it go live is so that, see if the, uh, the, the kicking team can uh, recover the ball, give them a fair chance, which I, I, I can understand. But now it looks like they're going to put it back where he back. muffed it. Yep, where he muffed it. Or maybe it's a penalty for doing that. I don't know. There's no flag. But 
It, it, normally, we do see a penalty. The White Hats. During the play, how is it? Delay. Oh, oh, oh I, I on the return because yeah, he, he returned because it. Because he returned it. Must be ended. Must be done. Okay. All right. So half the distance. So that'll back the Vikings up inside their own five. So Lowry, out of the pistol, will be taking this, this snap inside his own end zone. They mark the ball at the three. Yeah. First and ten Vikings. Hands it off. And the Ruster D safety, is there. Safety. safety. Oh, they're not going to give it to him. They're going to give him the forward progress. Although the tackle was made there in the end zone. Nice job by that defensive front to get there. And remember, Rashawn, if there's a holding penny by offensive line inside the uh, end zone, it's automatic safety regardless of the play result. Sagapolu and Tuatasi there. Meanwhile, this pass is complete over the middle to Bird. Thirteen yard pickup. Looks like the Vikings want to go pace on offense and the coaches are having a fit because they're not players aren't where they're supposed to be. They're not. And they're not showing much pace. Lowry looking near side. This one caught by Wilson again. This time he's going against JT Thomas, but he makes the catch on the slant at the 26. So it would be good enough for, let's see, it'd be just a little bit shy of the first down if it stands. Let's see what the penalty is. Oh, they're walking back. They go chop back. This they one going to go against Long Beach. Yeah, he called 75 and 77, which, which I don't know which did which. When, when one lineman or one offensive player is engaging up top at a block and another one goes low, you can't do that. So they mark this ball at the nine. First down, Lowry looking Near side, Wilson on a slant, Wilson with speed. On the outside, nice open field tackle made by Mark Hill Johnson. If Mark Hill Johnson doesn't make, doesn't make that shooting tackle, it could be a much longer gain on that play though. Nice over the middle gain. Pitch and catch from Lowry to uh, Wilson over the middle, from left to right. Wilson now with six catches for 96 yards. Meanwhile, it's Cole Monaco taking a big time hit. Big shot there by Howard. But Cole Monaco gets close to a first down, picks up nine there. You look like Gammon the Gammon the Cannon Howard <laughs> on that play. Lowry looking to adjust the play. Approaching the six minute mark. They give it to Bynum. He'll try the left side. He'll get around the edge. Has a block on the outside. Bynum on his feet. And down finally across midfield. The Russell's got to set the edge better than that. They go tempo here. Bynum getting the carry again. This time he's able to get two. There was a there's a there was a player going off the field for wrestlers that, that uh, a twelfth man that was coming off that wasn't quite off when they stopped the ball. Should have been uh, too many men on the field. On the wrestlers. Lowry, and the flag going to come in, Sonatis. Lowry's pass is incomplete. There's a flag on the field. 
Pass interference. Coaching staff didn't know if Mike Wilson was going to play this week. Wilson normally a starter at the sixth penalty of the half, by the way, for the Rustlers. Wilson normally a starter, but not in the lineup. They weren't even sure how much he was going to play this week. But I'll tell you what, ever since he's touched the ball, he's made quite an impact on this game. He's completely changed the dynamic of this game. He took the wrong release. He went inside, so let's go outside on the, on the back shoulder fade. See, they're, they're going pace, and, and Russell's trying to get guys in on and off the field here. Second and 10 from the 35. Lowry off the gun. They hand it off. Mason squeezes through the hole. Mason still on his feet. And holding on for dear life there was Silas Collins, finally able to wrangle him to the turf. Goes down to the 26 yard line. Nine yard pickup there. Looks like the Vikings want to tie this game. Tie it. Looks like they want to go for the lead. Here's Mason again oh running hard right through the Rustler defensive line. I was being optimistic. <laughs> I guess it'd be kind of a homer. Yeah, they want to go up. Out of the pistol, they give it to Mason again. This time off the right side. And Siliuta has to grab him and hold on as his teammates help to clean him up. Three yard pickup. You see the tempo increase. Mason gonna come off as Bynum returns to the game. Yeah, Coach Mitchell, I'm sure had his team prepared for this. I wonder if it's gonna happen. I'm sure they're prepared. Minix alone at the top of the screen. Bird in the slot on this near side. They look out in the flat, wide open is the tailback ice via end zone touchdown Long Beach, Andrew. Yeah. Just a nice swing pass to the running back. And goes right up the field, no one taking him out to the sideline touchdown. Um, excuse me, receiver. Ice Vaya, 5'8", 172-pound sophomore out of Lakewood. And he gives Long Beach a 13-10 lead here in the second. The point after attempt to come. Del Gadillo looks perfect on point afters this year. We'll give it a whirl. Kick is good. So 3.30 left in this first half. Long Beach 14, Golden West 10 is your watching Golden West Russell football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Fans, don't forget, Rustlers football right here on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Save with new car specials with factory rebates of $2,000 on select 2017 Corollas, including the LE and special edition models on the web at MillerToyotaOfAnaheim.com. Located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. We're talking about this linebacker core and the youth and inexperience there. You, Got a tailback come out of the backfield uncovered, walks in from 20 yards out. That's kind of tells you what's been plaguing this bunch defensively. Yeah, but they're on film, the teachable moments, so it won't happen again. They'll correct it. Johnson and Baldwin deep. It'll be Baldwin taking it 
at the two. Baldwin gets it up to the 19-yard line. That's where the Ruster offense will take over. So we've seen Pyle, we've seen Buxa. I like a single back to Pyle myself, but that's just me. It's interesting because Buxa was the, the backup coming into this season. Pyle was way down the depth chart at number four. But Buxa, of course, suffered that shoulder injury in the first game and made his return unexpectedly last week at Cerritos after missing the previous two games. He returns to lead the Russell offense here on first and 10 from their own 19. Tavai will line up next to him. Here's Smith. And they feed him on the end around. And Smith gets it on the outside, and there's going to be a flag, Smith with the carry. There's a flag on this on near field. side coming from the field judge. Perhaps either will hands in the face on Tees, maybe. So what Malik Welsh is indicating, cornerback, freshman 6'2", 196 from Hawthorne. Oh, they call it against Welch. Oh. Welch thought it was on these. Was that kind of a makeup call, Rashawn, maybe? <laughs> oh, it looks like they're correcting it. Oh, now it's going backwards. So Welsh was correct. Seventh penalty of the game for the Rusters. This one will move it back to the nine and a half yard line. Buxa going to run it. He's got some wheels at the 20 and out of bounds. Just shy of the 25-yard line. At the 24-yard line. Second down. 15 yards on the scamper there by Buxa. Sets up a much more manageable second down for the Rusters. Some of the defenders on the... Vikings are checking for rain with their hands up in there like what happened second is six they tried a little wide receiver screen there to Smith but all on top of it defensively are the Vikings Slot blitz here. Buxa and off the hands of Mouton. Into the punting unit. Number 21, Justin Prince for the Vikings. Defensive back, freshman, 5'11, five, five, one. 50, 195, excuse me. Getting into it with referees. That one wasn't one of Baldwin's better punts, so he gets somewhat of a mulligan there. Is this one going to be against the Russers? His point of emphasis all week in practice, the, the penalties. They made so many careless penalties last week in the loss at Cerritos. In addition to the missed assignments on the defensive side of the ball. 
but they have not been able to shore up the penalties here so far today. Ball when he gets ran into. This one gonna dribble into Lone Beach territory, take a Golden West roll all the way down to the 38 yard line. Baldwin was looking for a flag. He's not gonna get it, however. And a little bit of jawing between him I think and I th Cross Poyer. I think the referee thinks that he slipped more than he was touched. Two oh six left in this first half. Lowry with Bynum in the backfield with him out of the gun. Check with me over to the sideline. Kokomaniko off of his hands. Incomplete. And that incomplete, of course, stops stops the uh, clock. Lowry over the middle, caught Minix, a spin move, and he's going to be drugged down at, see where they spot the ball, 45-yard line. He had enough for a first down, but he spun out of it. So they mark him down officially at the 46. I actually like that spot in forward progress because he was still trying to go. For Minix, that's his first catch of the game. And they pick up the first down here with Bynum. They got Wilson going on the passing game. They get Bynum going. It's gonna be a could be a could be a long day for them. For Coach Mitchell and the wrestlers. You just caught it. There is Bynum in the passing game. He picks up a couple there on the reception. Gets out of bounds. The 43-yard line. So if Coach Mitchell wants to send a safety over the top of, of Wilson, he'll just start to bite him. Knowing that the linebacker core is uh, young. Lowry, far side, caught. And getting out of bounds there is the wide receiver, Jabari Minix. So Nine far, yards on the pickup. So far, the Vikings are putting on a clinic on how to, how to go down the field in two point, a two minute drill. Lowry again stops over the middle, incomplete. He took a shot there. Tyler Vimaona just drilled him into the turf as he threw that one incomplete. Right in front of the White Hat. So, must have been letting him, let him play football a little bit. That's good. Hey, the quarterback, he's, you know, he's got a uniform on too. 106 left. Vikings trying to add to this four point lead they have here in this first half. Prior to intermission. Lowry off of his hands. It was Bird, the intended receiver there. And fortunately for the Vikings, that one hit the turf. You got to bring those passes in. Or a little bit of a pivot route. You got to bring those passes in. Lowry with four wide, one-on-one -on -one left in the half. Over the middle, Cola Monaco, right down the seam, a catch, and down inside the 15. <laughs> 22 yards on the pickup. First and 10, Long Beach. 
Gavin, how did at I... the Rustler 12. Sorry about that. Gavin Howard has to come out the field because he, uh, it's a safety. Go out the field because his helmet came off. And timeout taken by Golden West. So Nick Mitchell, we've seen this before, taking these basketball timeouts, so to speak, to try to slow down the momentum of the opposing offense. That's more your expertise than mine. Than mine. <laughs> you like basketball a little more than I do. Well, quite a bit more, but anyway. Yeah, I, I, I do understand the concept, though. So basic concept is you want to see how they line up and then call timeout and then be able to devise a defense on how to do that. Or if they if they got a run going, you want to call the timeout just to try to slow them down yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something and, Phil Jackson and, never and, liked and, to do. And regroup your guys. Something Phil Jackson did not like to do. You're absolutely right. He would, unless press, more times than not, he'd allow his teams to play through it. In the playoffs, he was more inclined to call those timeouts. But in the regular season, play through it. It could be a 10 0 12 all run, and, and he'll let his guys still play through it. Well, obviously, the playoffs, a little, little, little more to uh, little lose more there. On the, yeah, <laughs> on line there, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little more on the line there, absolutely. Rashawn Haylock, Andrew King here with you. 51 seconds left in this first half. Ed Ford, our producer director here today. Van Vu providing the visuals. Saturday. In Huntington Beach, first and 10, Long Beach after the timeout, at the 12. They look fade. They look Wilson, incomplete. But a flag oh, comes in. That was not catchable. He grabbed onto him, yes, but it wasn't catchable. It, was, it wasn't catchable. He couldn't have caught it. That was Sonatus again. Yeah. He's already had a PI against him, but... It wasn't catchable. It I agree with you. I don't think that it was catchable. Oh. <clears throat> they should have. They should have picked that flag up. That flag wasn't. Well, Wilson was pulled from behind, and maybe they're thinking he could have jumped in. I, I don't know. But. So it's a first and goal at the two. It's Mike Wilson, Mike Davis, pardon me, said. The flag, the penalty occurred in the end zones. They placed the ball at the two. They hand it off and a big hit in the backfield there on Bynum. Tyler Vimaona. The Buena Park back goes down for a loss. So Long Beach will take a timeout with 38 seconds left. They have two remaining here in this first half. Yeah, Loss of three on that play. Coach Mitchell would gladly give up the three instead of give up the uh, touchdown here. Going down by a touchdown, an extra point is much better than going down 21-10. So if you're the wrestlers here, what are you talking about in that huddle over there with Nick Mitchell? Telling your defensive line, watch the run, and telling your cornerbacks, just play your man the best you can, trying to get a penalty. You know, I, I, for life of me, I don't understand why these, the defensive line for the uh, wrestlers not getting their hands up. Just swat the ball down, right? Get a tip, do something here. Second and goal from the five after the timeout. Lowry will try the pistol this time, Bynum directly behind him. They give it to Bynum, he goes up the gut and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings. Six yard rush at the middle, touchdown. Russells are too worried about the outside, not playing the, the run. It's a, it's a crapshoot though, really. I mean, it's one or the other, 50%. You play pass, you play run. Delgadillo for the point after. So after spotting the Rustlers 10, Long Beach State has reeled off 21 straight here to lead this one by 11 with 35 ticks left in the first half. Trying to figure where this game turned. 
personally, I believe it was when number one started getting his hands on the ball for Long Beach City. The Vikings got a little bit more continuity, a little bit more flow offensively when Wilson started touching the ball. And now they've developed a rhythm here. And, and, and you don't want this team to develop a rhythm because they can reel off yards in their sleep, averaging over 500 per coming into the game today. And they're a chunk offense. You know, what I, you know what I mean? Basically, they get yards in chunks. They don't get three and four yards. They get 10, 15-yard gains, and they just go right down the field on you. They might get a run for here, here and there, right, you know, for two man. yards, three yards, but they're looking to go down the field on you. So Johnson and Baldwin back to receive. Johnson will watch this one go over his head. So with 35 seconds left, wrestlers will have it first and 10 from their own 20. You try to put together something here if you're the wrestlers or just take a knee, lick your wounds, and expect to get the ball back at the beginning of the second half. I run, I run a drawer screen, see if I can pop something. You, you know, you know that was coming. You know, you know me. We make home games too long. You know that's what I'm gonna say. A drawer screen if they're gonna go after it, and if they if they pop something here, then I throw a ball deep, try to get a cheap pass interference call. But it looks like they're gonna not gonna happen. Nope. But you, you, you know me. Draws and screens are like my best friend as far as what to do in certain situations. So, Buxa will take a knee. You look at this Long Beach City wide receiving core and the numbers don't really scare, scare you as much as some of the talented receiving cores they've had in the past. But I tell you what, Wilson isn't even really a guy who too much was expected of coming into today, but he's really made a difference here for the Vikings as they will carry an 11 point, an 11 point lead into the locker room. At halftime, quarterback situation, of course, needs to be addressed. I think I know where you're going when I ask you this question, but start of the second half, figure 16 will be back out there? I, that's who I want out there. I mean, I, Luke says, you know, I understand about the, the depth chart, but you know, what you were saying like, was two weeks ago when I was here with you about uh, Coach Mitchell saying that he's not real good during the, during the week, but the game, he plays a gamer. You know, he play, he does the best at the game, you know, in, in the game, and that's kind of what he wants put the gamer out there, so, so to speak. Uh, isn't that what you said, right? I recall correctly. Okay, so I, I saw make sure my memory. In reference to, to yeah, Joe Pyle. Yeah, yes. I want to make sure my memory. I'm, I'm not yeah. questioning you on my, my own memory. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to, uh, that's what Coach Mitchell, I think he's going to do that. I mean, uh, depth charts are depth charts, but, you know, just like, just like rules. <laughs> Some people say rules are meant to be broken. Sometimes depth charts are just depth, depth charts, and you put the player out there to play. You know what I mean? Defensively. Biggest adjustment for these rosters. They gotta tackle and set the edge, and they gotta, they gotta. Uh, don't let. I know Wilson's went off, but it seemed like they kind of got him a little contained. They gotta make sure they don't start running the ball on them too, because it seems like you worry, you're worried about the pass game, you're worried about the run game. You gotta be. It's hard. It's easy for me to say I'm not a coach, but you gotta be balanced, and they gotta read their keys, Rashawn. You, you tell, I'm sure he's gonna tell his linebackers, here's the keys, read them. Play with the structure. Play within the structure of def defense and play play sound defense, and we'll have a chance. That's another thing I think Coach Rich is going to tell these these players. And penalties have been a factor as oh, well. Absolutely, wrestlers got eight of them here in this first half. Not the not not to harp on that, but it just seems like that's almost a normal thing. I hate to say that, but it is. It seems like a normal thing. Talk about penalties is like that's what happens, you know. Sad but true. However, we've been here long enough. And we, we've got enough uh, ammo, enough data to prove that to be true. Well, halftime here at Golden Westfield. We'll step aside. Coming up on the other side of the break. Got a surprise guest for you. Don't want to miss that right here on SportsNetUSA.net. It's the Vikings 21, the Rustlers 10. As you're watching, Golden West football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. On game day, football players aren't the only ones suiting up. Our crew's ready for any play. Yeah, can I get a one box? Extra sauce and toast. Hydrated Idaho, Idaho. Tailgate to go. So that's a box combo with extra cane sauce, Texas toast, fresh squeezed lemonade with crinkle cut fries, and a 25-finger tailgate. Nailed it! 
Football is just part of who we are. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. <laughs>
Uh, we want to do a spirit week leading up to that. So there's going to be fun events happening all throughout the week leading up to the game. Uh, themed days where your Golden West Pride on your, you know, come out, be involved with things. Do have some uh, new, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the get hyped for the game. You know, have some, you know, fun fairs. Bring pep out the athletes. Pep sports. rally. Thank you so much. Have some pep rally and such. So again, that's going to cost money. And again, we get to put money behind those efforts. Um, on top of that, our other services that we have on campus uh, starting next week is actually a pretty busy week. Our counseling and careers office are actually be sponsoring a transfer fair and a career fair. So anyone who's in the community don't have to be a Golden West student. We are a community college and we serve our community. Wow, so, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. I did not know that. We uh, put major, major money and effort behind serving the community we're in. Um, it, it, we, any way that we can help out, we try to. So with our career fair, we're going to have employers coming out. We're going to have uh, preparatory uh, sessions where students can come in, bring their resume, find out how do I interview? How can I get my resume cleaner? How can I really touch up on these items, experience that I've had? The transfer fair is going to host several, if not uh, dozens, of local area schools and out of area universities uh, for what are the plans that our students have to transfer out. Uh, any way that we can help them out, again, we always want to make sure that we can provide that service to anyone who needs it. Ben Olagi, Outreach Specialist here at Golden West College. Our guest at the half, Rustlers Trailing Long Beach City, 21 to 10. Uh, you talked about uh, the the career fair. What are, what are some of the, the fields, maybe, who, who, who may be on campus uh, next week? We're expecting, again, lot, just a myriad of different services. Uh, a lot of service industry will be out here, but again, we also have a lot of career-driven uh, service areas. So again, we'll have representatives for education. Uh, we're going to have some in the med field. Right now, the big push is in the STEM field. So again, science, technology, engineering, math, these areas. So we'll have different representatives having Boeing in the area. I'm sure there'll be someone out there representing for them. Any information that students or prospective visitors might want for that career fair, definitely I recommend they visit our website under the Counseling and Career Services, and they should have either information there regarding time for participants and just things to get prepared to participate and come out and be successful there. How has this, and when I say this, I mean this setup here, Golden West Field, home games being here on campus now for the first season in the history, uh, now 51 years uh, of the school. How's that? How has that impacted uh, uh, your job? What type of, uh, of impact has, has that had on you? Fortunately, I had the distinct honor of being on the planning committee for our inaugural game last year. Nice. So I was actually See, the chair. See, we knew we had this guy <laughs> on for a reason. <laughs> uh, I was actually uh, leading the group that put on the tailgate we had last year. That was awesome, so, by Right, the way. we had our fun inflatables for the kids, you know, face painting, fun like that, fire department, police department, video game truck, food trucks, and then we had a little village for all of our services on campus. That really put us on the map in our community here in Huntington Beach. We brought people in who traditionally didn't know that Oh, there's, I know Golden West is a swap meet on the weekends, but now we got football on exactly. campus. It brought us to life. Um, with that, we still have students and teachers, uh, counselors and principals who are asking about it. Hey, is that still something that's going on? So this, continuing into this new year, is definitely something that's really, again, put us on the map and gained a lot of public interest. With that, again, that translates to a lot of students coming in here, finding their place, getting involved with sports. You'll see, again, there's a lot of students out here who are, again, supporting their football team. Um, most of them are in the shade hydrating right now, but again, <laughs> As they know, should be. Yes, well, they should be. But they're out here, and they're supporting all of their teams now. we got students who all have all different interests uh, coming out here and want to continue that high school feeling of being at the games. So luckily, we not only have our football team going, but fall athletes also include our water polo, water men's, polo, women's, yeah. uh, volleyball, and a couple others. So, I mean, anything like that anything that can really provide that feel for students is really something that's going to keep us going i tell you what if you ever want to bring the tailgate back you got my vote <laughs> and that was a blast last season to be here on the 50th anniversary game uh, not just the fact that there was a game here but it's all the pomp and circumstances that came with it i mean there's a volleyball going uh, vo volleyball water polo game going on at the same time it was it was just a fun fun atmosphere fun time uh, to be here and, and, and involved in in, in this rustler community 
Um, without giving too much away, is there anything in store, any surprises, any teases you can give us for the Bell game and what, what we may be able to expect for that particular Saturday? Uh, we'll be having some student competitions, community competitions during halftime, and then who knows, there might be a little extra after the game as well. I like it, I like it. The Bell game is coming up. Don't want to miss that, folks. Of course, uh, as Ben mentioned, six of the last seven have been won by uh, the Rustlers, and that game going to be here October 28th at 1 p.m. right here at Golden West Field. Of course, we'll have it for you right here on SportsNetUSA.net, your home of Rustler football. Rustlers will have a bye next week before they get into Southern Conference play. Last thing, Ben, before we let you go, how can this – I know the 50th anniversary game was great. So good that, you know, as a, as a campus you decided, hey, let's do this for a whole year. How can this continue, not just from this year, but into the next year and the years to come? What type of impact could that have on your job, just in terms of more people wanting to come in here and wanting to be a part of this and, and to get that, that close-knit community feel that, that, this, that this provides? It really is going to depend on public interest. Um, the more that the community comes out and supports us, the more we have a call to action. So if we get more students coming out, uh, it doesn't have to be high school students, anything like that. The more attendance we have, anything, well, again, people are participating, supply and demand, my man. So anything that we can do and get people to keep on coming out in droves, we can find things to really expand what it is we do. One thing feeds into the other, the public interest, the fun, the excitement that comes with the campus, that's gonna translate into a growing campus and growing atmosphere. Nice. Thanks so much, Ben Olagi, Outreach Specialist, a.k.a. Master Recruiter <laughs> here on the campus of Golden West College. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. And joining us here at the half. We'll step aside. Andrew King will join me on the other side of the break as we'll break down the first half, give you some stats and analysis in addition to the second half kickoff. You're watching Golden West Russell Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Back here at Golden West Field, both the teams are starting to make their way back onto the field. Long Beach City 21, Golden West 10. Halftime here at Golden West Field. A couple stats for you to pass along. Long Beach has run 43 plays for 273 yards. Rustlers have run 29 plays for 189 yards. I think the biggest stat of all, however, is the penalties. Nine for 72 for the Rustlers in that first half. Nine penalties for 72 yards. Uh, just three penalties for the Long Beach City Vikings. Folks, we're pleased to announce we have a brand new sponsor here for Rustlers football. And they are the fine folks at Raisin Cane's, home of the always fresh, never frozen chicken fingers. Box combo, please. The Raisin Cane's were all about quality. We mix cane sauce in our restaurants every day. And our chicken is hand battered and cooked to order. Our Texas toast is grilled with just the right amount of butter and garlic. And our lemonade is always freshly squeezed. Love the window. And why do we do all this? Because it makes a difference. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, <laughs> one love. So I'll get personal with you, we're family. It's been about 10 years now. We've been doing Rustler football right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Raising Canes is an easy st sale. Back before my wife was my wife, went to go visit her in Mississippi, and she lived in a part of town where there was a fried chicken place on the four corners, on each corner of a big street. And she said, when you come out here, you got to see the chicken corner. But of all the places there, she took me to one place, and it was Raising Canes. And from that moment, I fell in love and been a huge fan and supporter and lover of Raising Cane's ever since. The cane sauce is amazing in addition to those fresh, never frozen chicken fingers. There's going to be a line. Anything good is worth waiting for, but they get you in and out. They're effective and efficient. So make sure you check out the five folks at Raising Cane's. 3150 Harbor in Costa Mesa. Rustlers will receive 
the second half kickoff. And see if they can knife into this 11-point deficit. Penalties have been an issue, and it's something that Nick Mitchell pointed out when I spoke with him earlier today. I'm sure there was a point of emphasis inside that Russell locker room at the half. They're going to have to clean that up if they expect to come back in this game today. And they're going to also try to somehow, some way, find some explosive plays. They did have one drive that they can hang their hat on, that 88-yard drive that led to seven. It was a Joe Powell engineered drive. Meanwhile, this would help Markel Johnson on the run back. He gets it ahead to the 40-yard line. So that'll help give this offense some good field position to start this second half. So here we go, 14-53. Third quarter action. Rashawn Haylock here alongside Andrew King, our producer director, Ed Ford, Van Vu providing the visuals for you here on this sensational Saturday afternoon in Huntington Beach. Whoever wins this game is going to get on the right side of 500. The loser will fall a game below as they enter. This SCFA wide bye week. Pio picked off. Prince with the pick. And he's coming back the other way. At the 40. Prince with a burst. 20. 10. A stiff arm. End zone. Touchdown. Vikings. There is a flag back at the 19-yard line, however. This one may be on the return. Mike Davis going to sort it out for us. If so, the touchdown won't count. Looks like it may be Long Beach football. We'll see. We've been clamoring for the last couple of weeks for Joe Pyle to take a shot. He takes one there, and he's picked off. He tried to throw that, throw that one into double coverage. And Prince with the excellent run back. That is not a fan you hear. That's actually one of the Long Beach City coaches. And it looks like his plea was heard. They waved the flag. So you take a look at the run back here. Prince has it up the far sideline. And he's running. I, there was a crack back there. That may have been the penalty or the reason why they threw that flag. Oh, you, you talk about defenseless defenders, defenseless receivers. And that was right in the area where they threw the flag. But hey, you can't argue about that one if you're a rustler. They waved the flag, apparently rightfully so. Del Gadillo on to attempt the point after. 28-10, Long Beach with the lead as they put up seven here in the first 27 seconds of this second half and the offense hasn't even touched the field. As Pyle is picked off, and it's returned to the house by the defensive back, Justin Prince, the freshman out of Narbonne. Folks, don't re forget, wrestler football right here on SportsNetUSA.net is brought to you by Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Go to their website for today's deals on used cars, including Toyota certified pre-owned vehicles. On the web at MillerToyotaofAnaheim.com. Located at the 91 and Euclid, Miller Toyota of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and education. All right, wrestler fans, get up. Not quite the way you want to start the half if you're the wrestlers. A dream start for the Vikings. Markel Johnson, for the second time this half, will have an attempt on a kickoff return. This time... He's able to get it back to the 29 yard line. Brought down to the 29 yard line. First down, wrestler. 
And one thing we talked about a lot last week was the fact that Pyle didn't really take shots. Buxa came in and took some shots. But the game plan didn't change even though Buxa was in there last week against Cerritos. It, it was primarily just to kind of see what you can get short and if you have an opportunity to take your chances. Buxa is a player that likes to take a lot more chances than Pyle does. Pyle took a chance there and he paid for it. Valdez swallowed up in the backfield. Loss of two. That's why they're called chances, right? You're taking a chance. Chance you might score, chance, you, chance unfortunately, they might score. Yeah, they might score on your pass, right? So. Second and 12, Valdez again. The gang tackling of the Vikings. All on top of that, Bunton and Marmer there to lead the charge for the guys with the white clad helmets. No gain there for Valdez. High snap, Pyle. And almost picked off again. That went in and out of the hands of the corner, Nehemiah Shelton. His eyes got as big as saucers there. Not sure he would have maintained his balance had he caught it anyway. But almost nearly picked off again there is Pyle. And a quick three and out for the Rustlers. So two drives, one pick six, one three and out. Not the way you want to start it here if you're Golden West. Absolutely not. You got the ball in the second half and you throw a touchdown pass, but for the other team, not good. Baldwin will kick this away. Here's Cedric Burton. Oh, he drops it. He muffs it. And it's covered by Hargo on the special teams. So a break there for the Rustlers. We've seen Bird have his issues fielding punts all afternoon that time. He paid for it, and there's a Viking down. So that basically essentially works as your long shot, right? <laughs> Getting a punt, putting the ball down there. The player's arriving in pain. Defender's working on his left side. Can't quite get a number yet. It's Malik Welch, the injured Viking on the turf, a freshman corner out of North Torrance, and it appears to be in a lot of pain. Yes. Looks fairly familiar. Uh, having the, looks like the left uh, upper extremity. We had something like that earlier this season, right? So. See Brett Peabody, fifth-year head coach of the Vikings out there on the field. He's right next to the official there with the gray polo shirt on and the visor. Just told the rest of his team to head towards the sideline. Rustler players all on their sideline taking a knee. Welch is sitting up now, so that at least is a good sign. It's Peabody. Begins to walk back to his sideline. Brett Peabody, fifth-year head coach, previously coached at L.A. Harbor College before pretty much turning Long Beach City around. Welch able to walk off under his own strength, but definitely favoring that left arm of his. Get back to Peabody prior to his time at L.A. Harbor. 
was a coordinator and eventually became the head coach. He was a head coach at South Torrance High School. Coach Chauncey Washington at South Torrance, the former USC tailback. Washington had a cup of coffee in the NFL. Buxa will take a try at quarterback. First play is a carry and a nice burst off the right side that time by the tailback, Dwayne Roper. So Roper, not a name we've called at all this season, but he gets the carry there. And it goes for seven. And he was on a rope there for seven yards there. <laughs> it's just too easy. When it's hanging like that, I just, it's just too easy not to say that. So. Roper was in there earlier, but he didn't touch the ball. Got the carry there. Tavai back in there. As Buxa operates out of the pistol. They give it to Tavai. And he's going to be swallowed up. And that's a play maybe Buxa wants to keep it, right? Yeah, I mean, you got you got one quarterback in Powell who wants to be a little more conservative and kind of work down the field. He took his chance earlier and he paid for it. That's why he doesn't like to do it. Buxa seems more of the gunslinger type, wants to just, you know, go after it. So, yeah, Buxa wants the ball. He wants to be in charge. He wants the ball in his hands to control the game as much as he can. Third and two. Pressure coming, Buxa fires, caught Smith. 15 yard line and looks like he got just enough for the first end. They needed three, he picked up about four there. First or second grab of the day for Smith, pardon me. He's been quiet. He's not even on the field, he should be on the, he should be in the slot maybe, I don't know. Smith lined up in the slot, top of the screen on this play. Comes in motion. They fake the end around, they give it to Tavai. Tavai with a little bit of a crease there, but he's gonna be wrangled down to the turf by Prince. And he gets to the 11 yard line, a pickup of four there. Rhino's been quiet. I, I think going to the speed back more than a bruiser right here would be good, though. Need a little more team speed on the field here. Meaning Valdez and or Roper. Exactly. 10.39 to play. Second down. They fake to Tavai, and it passes off the hands of Deese. Yeah, the defender tripped all over him, but they didn't. They don't call that, but they call the pass interference that was. I think it should have been a pass interference there. It was. Well, it was close. He looked contact. What do you want to call it? I mean, I understand you got to play. You got to play defense, defend, but I don't know. I just want referees to be consistent. Whatever they're going to do, be consistent with it. One on one coverage to the top of the screen. That's Ratsliff. If Buxa wants it. Steps up, Buxa going to tuck it and run. Tries to cut it back inside and is inside the five and down at the two. And looks like that's enough for a first down. So going to be a first and goal. They mark it officially at the three yard line. Now they got, they got four shots. We got four shots for for six points. Maybe even eight. Books out of the pistol. Tavai up the guts. And he's pushed back. Stays on his feet, but called down. And a nice job there defensively by the safety guy offered on the run. Second down and go. Yeah, I kind of want to see the wrestlers go pace. I mean, no, not not necessarily right here, but just oh, you know, rest of the game here. Go pace, and they gotta try to catch up. They gotta go pace here. A little more urgency would be good. They give it to Smith on the end around. Stutter step dives 
end zone. Touchdown, Rustlers. So Xavier Smith finds the end zone on the end around. And the Rustlers within 12 now with this point after pending. That fly sweep action. Rodriguez gets the extra point. Long Beach 28, Golden West 17. As you're watching Rustler football right here on sportsnetusa.net, 9.15 to play here. Third quarter, can't help but to think about that pick six to start this half. You're looking at just a four point game right now had that not occurred. But as it is, it's still two possessions. We got plenty of time. Now defense has to play 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 wrestlers defense. You and I both know this team can play defense. This well, play if we learned anything from the first half, you gotta locate number one, but not just locate him. You gotta find a way to get him to not touch the ball. He was an absolute problem in that first half. Don't forget about Elijah Bynum too, running back as well. But you're right, yes, you're right. Bynum, you mentioned it in the first half, he can be dangerous in the run or the pass, or even special teams as he gets it here across the 20. And he's downed at the 22. So that's where Long Beach City will start their first drive of the half. 9-10 to play here in this third. Rusters had nine penalties for 72 yards in that first half. That's way too many. It's a killer. Lowry will start this drive out of the pistol. He's got Bynum behind him. For Watt, they give it to Bynum. Bynum a stiff form against McKinney, but not able to make any progress as they string him out and he runs out of bounds. Ends up losing a yard there. And the Russell's using the 12th man with the sideline to their advantage. Setting the edge and just, just dancing with him until he goes out of bounds. Using, using that 12th man helps a lot. We, but again, setting the edge helps, right? Absolutely. Here's over the middle. That one incomplete. It goes in and out of the hands of the intended wide receiver, Minix. We apologize for any language you may have heard. The Long Beach City sideline is a lot closer to us than you may think. <laughs> so some of that may have been picked up by our microphones. It's open air, too. So Third down. Pressure coming and incomplete. Lowry just throwing that one away for his life. Pressure right in his face. Silas Collins and Tyler Vimaona creating some havoc. And the Rustlers force a three and out. You call for the defense to do something. They force a three and out there, Andrew. That's that's Rustlers football right there, right? With their, 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 their offense needs the ball. They go get a stop, right? That's what Rustlers football is all about. Let's see if nine can touch the ball here. Let's see if they give him something. Carcamo. Pressure in his face. He gets it away. This one going to be short. Bounces over the head of Johnson in a Long Beach roll down to the 41-yard line of Golden West. So... Johnson doesn't get an opportunity to return it, but still good field position for the Rustlers. Yeah, it took a little bounce for the, for the Vikings, but obviously, if you're within 10 yards of the 50-yard line, obviously that, that's pretty good field, field you'll position. You'll take it, right? Yeah, yeah, you'll take it every day. Every day and twice on Sunday, well, twice on Saturday, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I almost said Sunday. My bad. Take it on Sunday, too? I guess. Twice, even three well, times. Well, you and I won't be here, so. Yeah, no, we won't. <laughs> Still be nice weather. <laughs> Books out of the pistol. Tavai, the lone back. Going to keep it himself. 
the quarterback out of St. Anthony's. And absolutely, I agree with you there. Especially when you're losing, right? You don't want any underthrows. No underthrows. That's kind of what happened with Pyle, right? The ball underthrown a little bit. But it, it was also double coverage. It was just not the best decision. I'm sure he'll probably tell you that as well. They put Sheldon White in motion this time. He's been quiet today. White, he catches the shovel pass. Sheldon White, we just called his name, and there he is. He picks up 10 on the shovel pass and a first down for the wrestlers. Be careful, Sheldon. Spiking the ball, slowing the ball, throwing the ball in the Throwing the ball in the field not good. We delay a game. You don't want to be doing that. I know you're happy. You want to get back in this game, but that's not the way to do it. Keep your composure, fellas. First catch of the game for White. It goes for 10. Rustlers first down and 10 at the 37-yard line of the Vikings. Tavai off the left side. Rhino, a hurdle and a somersault to the 30. Six yard pickup. I tell you what, nobody brings the acrobatics <laughs> like 22. If he's not hurdling, he's he's doing suplex, right? <laughs> Getting suplexed over the top. I'm saying. <laughs> the circus, Cirque du Soleil, you name it. Could have a future in that. This football thing doesn't work out. Deese on the seam, caught in zone. Touchdown. Rustlers. Running four birds, slot receiver, left side. Deese. Touchdown, Rustlers. That catch puts Deese over 100 for the game. Four grabs, 102 yards. A touchdown grab there, and the Rustlers are within five. As Rodriguez attempts the point after, cuts it to four. 28-24, 6.43 to play here in this third quarter. And how about that throw right up the seam? Big time throw by Books, a whizzed it past the ear of the defensive back, and Deese wasn't even expecting No, he was having to run my route, and all of a sudden he just, he's having just, just Stab the ball basically, just grab the ball because he's like almost like scared of you know, like you're scared. Like, I gotta catch it, like, I gotta catch it before it hits me. Yeah, reflex, yeah, reflexes. Then I'll just, I'll just walt waltz in, right? That was basically four verts. You just go deep, and when they play cover three, that's that's a real good cover three, uh, cover three beater, what they call cover three beater there. So the rustlers are going down 28 10 early in this third, have reeled off 14 straight. As they kick it back off to the Vikings. This one is kicked short. And taking it is Gatlin, one of the upmen. And Gatlin's sideline popped at the 30-yard line. So last time out, this defense forced a three and out. Still have to apply some sort of pressure. Slow down this Long Beach offense. Yeah, but you know, they've been miscues. Lowry's has some miscues, but his receivers too, uh, on that third down, trying to throw the screen pass, just couldn't quite com uh, complete it. It's the right call, the blitz was coming, let him up the field, just couldn't quite complete the screen pass. Three wide for Lowry, out the pistol. They give it to Bynum, he has some room on the outside, turns the corner, has a block from Wilson, puts his shoulder down at the 40, as JT Thomas is able to make the tackle but it's gonna be a first down for Long Beach. You're gonna keep hearing me say it, you gotta set the edge better than that. I mean, I know they gotta play the, they gotta protect against the pass as well, but the, the, the uh, defensive ends and linebackers gotta play their keys better. When there's someone yelling pass or run, they gotta react as soon as possible. Pressure coming, they try to set up a screen there for Wilson. But it's incomplete. Nice job by the Rustlers staying at home. Wilson wants a flag on that play. Not gonna get it. Within five yards, you, you, can, you can jostle with them. And you can't like personally knock them down, but you everything, everything but, so. So 
Lowry to Wilson again at midfield. And another first down. Picks up 12 there. He's in the Golden West territory. Here, here comes the and pace. You see the tempo. Yeah, here comes pace now again. Quickly out, Baya. Baya down at the 35. 12 yard pickup, another first down. It's okay, just have a bend but don't break defense. Make him kick a field goal and in this level of football, field goals are a crap shoot. Seems like every time the Rustlers do something, this Long Beach team is able to respond. What a stab there by Minix. Are you kidding me? Sensational catch there by the wide receiver out of Carson down at the 20-yard line. This is what this can do for you. Bynum. Reaches the end zone, and there's an answer for Long Beach City. Elijah Bynum from 20 yards, and the lead is back up to double digits for the Vikings. Not setting the edge. Nice run by Bynum from right to left. Russ is playing the pet, worrying about the pass. That's what happens. You have to make a play honest. That's what making the defense play honest can do for you. Come right back and score. Extra point by Delgadillo is good. 35 to 24, our score here on SportsNetUSA.net. Rashawn Haylock alongside Andrew King, our entire SportsNetUSA.net crew. Seems like every time these wrestlers put a little bit of pressure on Long Beach, they come right back with a tremendous answer. This time, it was a successful touchdown scoring drive. I'm probably gonna sound like a broken record, Rashawn, but I'm telling you, you got it. This is what this is what happens when you make a defense play on play. You want it. You don't keep them guessing. You keep a defense guessing on you're gonna pass. You're gonna run the ball. And I told you, Smith has gone off for the uh, Vikings in the first half. And I told you, you don't want to get Bynum going. And Bynum's going on the ground now. So now they got both yeah. now, right? You and, got your and, receiver and, and a running back yeah. to worry about. And Wilson and, and Bynum both touched the ball on that drive that's as well, Wilson, too. Yes. That's I, yeah, that's and, what I got Wilson, yes. And it's, it's just like you talked about. That's double trouble now if you're this wrestler defense. Yep, because you, you can send him out wide in the five wide sets they have, right? And you can use him as running back. So he's very dangerous. It's going to be a who team with the la team with the ball last wins the game maybe. And the return gets ahead to the 30 yard line. If I said if I said Smith, I met Wilson. Just to clarify. Long Beach City team that is playing with a heavy heart today. Earlier this week, they lost one of their teammates, Tim Johnson, a backup offensive lineman. He was a product of St. Anthony High School, passed away at the age of 19 on Sunday morning from complications to a car accident earlier in the month. Coaching staff as well as the players have decals of TJ on their uniforms today. Deese makes the catch there. Johnson, in the words of longtime head coach Brett Peabody, was 
everything that exemplified what you look for in a Long Beach City football player. He's a character, team first guy, first guy in the huddle, ran the scout team, very likable guy, and so it, it hit this team very hard. So, of course, they're playing with him on their hearts today as they continue through this football game against the Golden West Rustlers. There was a moment of silence held here before today's game for Johnson. And a nice gesture there by the Rustlers and everyone involved with the, the game facilities crew here right. at Golden West. But it seems like through the years, there's been a, a number of times we've had to talk about this. It seems like it, it, one car accident after another. A nice catch made there by Hargo at the 45-yard line. And not to be gloom and doom, if it's not a car accident, you, sometimes it could be cancer. It's so young and tough cancer hits you, you know? Yeah. So, I know earlier in the season we were talking we about We were talking cancer. about that, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, you're right. It's a car accident. It could be anything. So, it's just... And the Russ is doing it. It's just... At the end of the day, we're all human beings. You know what I mean? Like, I know I always say that, but it's true. We're all human beings. We want to play. We want to watch an entertaining game, sport. But at the end of the day, we're all, we're all human beings. We all want, you know, generally the same things. First and 10, Rustlers at the 45. One yard gain there for Tavai. I wish there was more urgent. I'm gonna keep saying. I wish there was more urgency on the uh, side of the wrestlers. Buxa with four wide. Tavai the lone back. Seven on the play clock. And this one thrown too high. Too Hargo hard. was wide open. Too hard, too. And just a misfire there by Buxa. Throwing the heater when all he had to do was throw, I mean, get a pass there, but not throw it that hard. And he had enough space around him. Yeah. He could have got some rack yardage out of it. Yeah, he went Nolan Ryan, didn't need to. <laughs> high heat there. Yeah. Struck him out. <laughs> Good game to watch. 35-24 our score. Under two minutes to play here in the third. They go roll the pocket this time. Buxa looking, trying to throw. Gets around the corner, but not enough for a first down as he's ran out of bounds at midfield. And a little extracurricular activity between Tavai and getting mixed up with one of the Vikings there. Buxa going to run it for four yards there. I know you're not Brings up a fourth down. Sorry, I know you're not sitting down. I was going to tell you to sit down, but I, I won't bother. Actually, I actually like the punt here because you put him back. You try to pin him back. I, I wouldn't even say fake it, but. Try like, to flip the field position? Yeah, but I I, I think give them, like, make them go all the way down the field. Baldwin with another one of those brilliant kicks. Oh, and a big hit there on special teams. You didn't call fair catch, it's fair game, right? No Howard, fair catch, it's fair game. Howard's applied some big time shots today. And there was a new punt returner in the game for Long Beach City. That was Cola Monaco. But how about Howard with pace just blowing them up there that time? I don't remember that number. <laughs> and Howard's been making big time hits all game long. Yep. 24 and Black has definitely laid some major wood here this afternoon. You know, if you played roulette, that might be a good good, good color for you, right? Good number, right? 24 <laughs> and Black, right? Always Black. <laughs> I don't know about the number, but I know always Black. At least that's what I was told. I don't have any personal experience. First and 10 Vikings from their own seven. Ground game doesn't get much. Money Mason on the carry. Yeah, 
see that the defense for the rest is a little disorganized. It's getting lined up. They fake it, and here is Bird. And Bird wrangled down from behind. It's going to be a horse collar. Oh, that should be a, that should oh, be another penalty there, too. Howard caught the flag and threw it. Yeah, that should be another That's penalty. That's a no-no. That should be another penalty. Now, I can understand it's coming towards you. You catch it because you want to go in your, your, your face mask and your eye. I can catch I, I can understand it, but toss that back. And he's fortunate that's all it was, yeah. is 15. Could have been unsportsmanlike conduct as well. Tack on another 15. And an ejection. Yeah, exactly. Two for, right? Get a two for, you're gone, right? So this one will move the Vikings up to the 46 yard line. So we're under a minute to play here in this third quarter. Wheeler in there at a tailback. Fake it to him, throw it over the middle. Bird once again, almost this exact same play to Bird. And Bird into Rustler territory. Don't get chippy, guys. And look out. And there's another flag that comes in late after the play. Look out. Now, now we're starting to come unglued now. Now the Rustler's starting to come unglued. This is not good. Got to keep your composure, Rashawn. Pickup of 19 if it stands. 11 points. It's not that big of a deficit. It looked like one of the rustlers came in there trying to play peacemaker and ended up with a flag. Maybe they'll, they'll just call it off or do offsetting. Hopefully just do offsetting. Yeah, maybe they're going to do offsetting. I don't know. Wishful thinking, I guess. Offsetting penalties there. They just give him a free, what, 30 yards in the last three plays? Even Vivian's shaking her head. <laughs> She's not satisfied with it either. That's funny. Uh, it's, I Meanwhile, can't, I can't Lowry heating up. That's five straight completions for him. Yeah. As we approach 30 seconds left in this third quarter. Wheeler, and he's going to be hitting the backfield. Three seconds left in the quarter. Vikings, and that one batted down. You've been calling for it all day. Rustlers linemen and or linebackers to get their hands up. That was Rudy San Jose there getting the deflected pass. And that will take us to the fourth quarter. So at the end of three, it's Long Beach City 35, Golden West 24. As you're watching Golden West Rustler football right here on Sportsnet USA. Net. If you're a member of the U.S. military with current active duty status or a reservist, you may qualify for a $500 rebate toward the purchase or lease of a new Toyota, new Toyota at Miller Toyota of Anaheim. Retirees or veterans honorably discharged within one year of service and household members of eligible qualifying military personnel also qualify. More details at MilitoreofAnaheim.com, located at the 91 in Euclid. Milotoda of Anaheim supports high school sports, community college sports, and most important, education. Teams flip fields as we get ready to start the final 15 minutes of play here in Huntington Beach. Vikings driving. Been helped out by a couple of 15 yarders. A field's 100 yards. You give a team 30. And, and if I can have to 
to don't even have to travel the entire hundred yards. But yeah, and and they're a chunk office, like we yeah, said. Yeah. They're a chunk. They take chunks. They take chunks in ten and, and fifteen. You're, and you're giving them chunks. Yeah, and you're giving them thirty yards, three three or four plays, not good. Lowry, in the flat, Wheeler catches it. Nice open field tackle there by Johnson. So going to bring up a fourth down and six. And that'll send on the kicking unit. Make it a 14-point game, huh? So Delgadillo, two for four on the season. It's a long of 42 on the year. This one going to be from 33 from the right hash. Good. So it could have been a whole lot worse. But instead, it's 38 24. So still a two possession game for the Rusters. But it could have been a lot worse. Still a lot of ground to make up here for Nick Mitchell's bunch. 14 13 left in this game. Got a whole bunch of time to do it. They did, however, show a propensity to score quickly in that third quarter. They've shown some flashes of, of being a, a, a really good offense in this game. And at other times, they've kind of reverted back to some of the things that have plagued them throughout the course of this season. And seasons past, for that matter. Exactly. Imagine they would stick with Buxa. He's had the hot hand here in this second half, whereas it was Pyle in the first half. It's been the freshman out of St. Anthony who's engineered some scoring drives here in this second. Johnson and Baldwin will be back to receive it. Each one stands at the Rustler two-yard line. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm, I, I'm hoping to see some urgency from the Rustler's offense. Clay Diamico. Will boot it away for Long Beach. This one carries into the back of the end zone. Diamico has quite the leg. As a field goal kicker, he can boot some as well. Although they've gone with Delgadillo primarily to kick the field goals. But Diamico, who just booted that one into the back of the end zone once again. Coach Peabody says is good from 60 if he needs them. So see how that plays out. If in fact <laughs> you get a chance to see that today, but you wow. see the, you see the leg strength. Yeah. And if he's got wind, he got the guy yeah, got the wind going for him, yeah. right? A little bit. Look yeah. out! Look out, McFadden. <laughs> They're going that way. Books are out of the gun. Four wide to start this drive from the rust of 20. Tavai in the flat, they find him, turns it upfield. Rhino a hurdle at the 30-yard line and down at the 31. Yeah, that 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 uh, running back uh, uh, motion to the left and just sort of throws the ball to him, basically already in the flat, in the flat area, final line of scrimmage. Pick up a seven there. This time they give it to Tavai on the ground. Guy offered big time tackle there, but Tavai with the first down. Pickup of six. Yeah. Running the stretch zone play to the right, outside zone. Tavai just picks his, and the picket fence, he picks the hole he wants to go through and he just runs right through for a nice game. First and 10 from the Rustler 38. Buxa steps up in the flat. Xavier Smith, all kinds of room in front of him. Smith, a stutter step across midfield and taken down at the 46 yard line. I have no idea what the flag was. It's over the far side near the wrestler's bench. I don't know. At, at the end of the play, there was some yeah. 
extracurricular. Yeah, <laughs> little, little talking, little jawing. This team has got to keep their composure, Rashawn. I, I don't understand it. Yep, Coach Mitchell will take it, right? We'll take it. Coach Mitchell will take it, I'm sure. Have you had a chance to say hello to Mrs. Mitch? I'm sure she's listening. I have not. Hello, Mrs. Mitch. <laughs> hello. How are you? Hope all is well up with you up, up north. Got the bye week next week. Thanks so much for listening and all your support of us. Books are... His pass is incomplete. He was looking for Smith once again. So they're kind of hiding Smith in the flats now, trying to give it to him in space that way. That one, unsuccessful, however. Smith was looking down the field thinking that Buxa was going to throw the deep pass. That's why he wasn't looking for the ball. After the ball went by him, he, by him, he just pointed like, what about that right there? Take the shot. Buxa now 7 of 12 for 88 yards. And a touchdown. Buxa keeps it himself. Buxa, Buxa on his feet still. Tremendous effort by the freshman out of St. Anthony. 22 yard pickup there by Johnny Buxa. It's a first down for the Rustlers. How did he stay on his feet that time? He used the, 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 the Madden stick to stay up and keep his balance. <laughs> First and goal from the nine. Score here by the Rustlers could make this thing interesting. They try the pistol. Play fake, slant, incomplete. Ball thrown behind the intended wide receiver, Mouton. Going to bring up a second and goal. And the defensive. Lyman's was defensive ends put their hands up with those slant passes. They're gonna knock the ball down, possibly get an interception. So, and they're doing kind of a sugar rush, which I was gonna talk about that sugar rush. They 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 go up the field and kind of just stand there and kind of almost dance with the offensive lineman. They don't really rush up the field, trying to contain a, uh, the run, a running quarterback. Correction, that was Jones there on the intended receiver. Meanwhile, here's Tavai off the right side, nothing doing. An emphatic. Shutting of the doors there by DeAnthony Jones, the freshman out of Luzinger. I'm going to call it right now. This, this is, uh, I think this is four, to, four, four down territory here at this time of the game, but that's just me. You think they go, if they get to it, they have to go, to go for it on fourth down for the seven? I, I absolutely think you go for it. Third and goal. Slant again. This one through the hands of Mouton. A little off target, but probably a catch Mouton could have had. Brings up fourth down. and Get your hands on it. You got to catch it, Sean. You got to catch it. Get your hands on it. You got to catch it. Looks like the field goal unit's coming in. Twenty-seven yarder from Rodriguez. He missed it. That one goes wide right by Rodriguez, and it remains a fourteen point game. Might have short kicked it a little bit. You know, the, the receiver is short handed because they get like a hit. I think he didn't want his leg hit, so he kind of didn't really follow through with his leg there. It's Bird on first down, and Bird up the sideline. 
wrestled down from behind by Avery Jones. But a huge pick up there. Down at the 47. You see, after the play, Avery Jones is playing with fire there. He could have got another 15 yard penalty for unsportsmanlike contact there. And Bird now over 100 yards with that last catch. Lowry in the slot, wide open Wilson. And he's going to walk in. Touchdown, Long Beach City. Fifty three yards. Big days for both Bird and Wilson. Lowry now approaching four hundred yards through the air. Just don't call him Big Bird. And this one getting out of hand. Yep. Extra point by Del Gadillo is good. You talked about it. They get him in chunks. Bird with a big chunk to start the drive. And it's finished by an even bigger chunk. 53 yards on the touchdown reception from Lowry to Wilson. And all of a sudden, it's a three score game now. That's why you and I, I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, right? But he could have went for it. Who knows what they would have done, but maybe even got a cheap pass interference call if they passed the ball one more time. But Deese had the ball twice. Deese, and, uh, at least one time on, on him, he had the ball in his hands and catch the ball. So I guess could have, would have, should have, right? It's just the blown coverages, the missing assignments, the, the lack of communication has just driven this coaching staff crazy. Lack of composure. Keep your composure, gentlemen. We talked about how much talent is on this roster and, and the numbers. Numbers that have not really been seen here. Johnson going to run this one out from five yards deep. Markel Johnson trips at the 20. And look out. There's some pushing and shoving. And watch out. And the benches are clearing. Get suspended. Stay back, fellas. Don't be doing this. The referee's got to get control of this game, Rashawn. What was it, two, three, four years ago, we, we had something like this? Was it Was uh, El Camino, wasn't it? That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. That, was, that, that did not end well. No, someone threw a helmet. I remember chucking a helmet in the crowd, right? Yeah, a, a helmet was chucked into the crowd. Uh, locker room was vandalized. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember you and I walking through. Yeah, we were told to stay on, st yeah. stand there. Wait. We, we actually couldn't leave the, the stadium for no. quite some time yeah. until the game ended. Yeah. No flags despite all of that, huh? All right. Books are picked off. Jones. Touchdown, Long Beach City. As it has just begun to unravel for the Rusters here in this fourth quarter. Maybe you go to the well one too many times there. I think everybody in the building know, knew where that ball was going. And I was telling you to run that action, right? Make him uh, bring, uh, bring the linebackers up and throw over the top of that. They could have done, they could have tried that. They didn't try it. I think earlier they did try it. Quarterback didn't see it. Fuchs didn't see it. Wrestler QBs have thrown two interceptions today. Both have resulted in the six for the visitors. 52-24. Ten minutes and 41 seconds separate the Rustlers from, which now looks like a very much needed bye week. Yeah, he's got to be telling his team, guys, just keep your composure, keep your composure. Don't embarrass, don't embarrass your teammates. 
Don't embarrass your school. Keep your composure. the speech yeah, you can hear you can hear the speech there you can see Brett Peabody disassembling the huddle there right on the Viking bench because of our proximity proximity to it we had yeah, the opportunity to hear a little bit of what he was saying and essentially he was telling his team not to get caught up in any chippy play. They still have a lot to play for this season. When you look at big picture, you look at league championships, you look at playoffs, a win tonight or today would be the third loss of the season for Golden West, which kind of handicaps their chances of, of anything in, in, in terms of playoffs, unless they, of course, are able to win the Southern League. And run the table in, in, yeah. in conference, right? So. so Peabody called a timeout to deliver that emphatic mes message to his team. Up now 52 to 24 in this fourth. And I can almost promise, I almost guarantee you that's what Coach Mitchell is basically echoing the same type of thing and his, his words telling his team the same thing. Johnson going to return this one six yards deep. Johnson breaks the tackle. The slippery DB out of Vallejo across the 20 and down at the 27 yard line. And while we have a minute, we want to let you at home know we have a brand new sponsor, SportsNetUSA.net and Golden West Rustler Football. None other than Raisin Canes. Always fresh, never frozen chicken fingers. Home of the spectacular cane sauce. And don't forget about the crinkle cut french fries and the thick buttery Texas toast. Yeah, they got it for you right there at Raisin Cane's, always fresh, never frozen. Visit Raisin Cane's, 3150 Harbor Boulevard in Costa Mesa. Books are nearly picked off again. I think they go back to the bullpen. Sorry about that. I think they go back to the bullpen you. here. <laughs> I wanted them to hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Time, tonight's call of the bullpen brought to you by, yeah? Andrew King, I guess. I don't know. Buxa staying in there at quarterback. I mean, I, I I understand what you're saying, but I figure at this point, you got the freshman in there, uh, slant over the middle incomplete. Might as well allow him to get some real live game reps. You got a bye week coming up. He's not going to get these type of reps during the bye week. Not going to get these type of reps in practice, you know? So maybe you keep the first year guy in there. That's the, count, the counter argument to you. I understand what you're saying, but the counter argument to what you're saying is what I just said, essentially. Yeah, you're, you're balancing, though. You're, are you playing for this season or for next season? I mean, I know what you mean. These kind of well, I, jump, I, I, jump I, time in games, but still, you know. It's I, like, I, I don't think they know that he's not the guy for this season. Huh? Books a complete far sideline, Ratzliff. You know, his receivers really haven't uh, done him any – the receivers, either, either quarterback, the receivers haven't done him any favors, so. I mean, it was evident today both guys played. So I, I don't know that a decision has made. And Rastliff gets the catch again at the 40. I mean, if, if obviously we we don't have the the liberty or, of our luxury of watching game tape, so in a sense we're we're sort of prisoners in the moment as we talk about this right now. But you know, you have to make a decision right now. I don't know that any guy separated himself today. I don't know if you feel any differently. Books are going to let it fly. Incomplete. So I, 
I hear what you're saying, but but again, just pick pick a quarterback. You know what I mean? Like if you have two, you have none, right? I mean, I pick pick a pick a quarterback and, and ride that. You know, for lack of a better term, ride the horse the whole season. Ride him. You know, that's that's what you got to do. You know, uh, through thick and thin, pick a guy. I mean, unless you really, unless you just need a changeup or something. Like say P Pyle played the whole game and they're just now putting uh, books in. That'd be one thing, but this this back and forth thing. How do you pick a guy if you're not sure what you have? Uh, coach Mitchell's the coach. I think he has to look at the, he has to look at the film, look at the film, and uh, you know talk to his uh, offensive coordinator. And, but you just you got to make a decision. I mean, he's I'm sure he's been in this situation before, or having two quarterbacks. So you know. You gotta just pick one. I mean, I, I we're just having open, you know, conversations here. No one's really right or wrong. Just pick one, be certain, and, and just go with it. So. Baldwin's kick takes a rustler roll to the twenty-yard line. Uh, the crowd kind of died down. <laughs> I mean, this tank, this this game took a drastic turn. It was twenty-four to twenty-eight. And you figured the wrestlers had an opportunity to maybe take the lead, or had a little bit of momentum on their side, and tell our audience about the uh, Fullerton game coming up, coming up this week. Is this uh, tonight? Later tonight, six p.m. Fullerton College football returns right here at sportsnetusa.net as the Hornets visit Moore Park. 6 p.m. kickoff, audio-only broadcast right here on sportsnetusa.net. Our esteemed colleagues Mark Pavlovich and Corey Nalen will be on the call. Coming up next week, L.A. Valley football. As they'll be playing games in the American Conference. Pretty sure all the national American Division, I'm part, pardon me. I'm pretty sure all the National Division teams are on a bye next week. Um, so we won't be here, but you can check out L.A. Valley as they take on Mount San Jacinto. Casey Mazzota, friend of the program, head coach there at Mount San Jacinto. 6 p.m. kickoff right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Had Casey's dad, Frank Mazzota Sr., and his Cerritos Falcons last week. It was good catching up with him. Had a chance to talk to him a little bit prior to the game and about his season and, and how much he loves what he's doing down there at Cerritos. But he really loves his family, man. He's, he's checking in on all of his sons. And Casey coaching at Mount San Jacinto. And, of course, Frank Jr. at La Habra. He's got a grandson playing out in the... Marietta area, area high school ball. And anytime they can all get a win on the same weekend, it's a good weekend for the Mazotas, and they really celebrate the heck out of that. So you love to hear hear that type of stuff. We got military families. So that's a football family. <laughs> I heard of one, yeah, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 752 and counting here in this fourth quarter. 52 24 Long Beach on top. Markel Johnson backpedaling catches at the 45. And he's going to be hit immediately. And look out. Some race mask, maybe? A little more extracurricular activity. There is a flag on the play, however. So we'll see. This is. Maybe a face mask, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm Mike saying. Davis and company will discuss this. Books in the offense will come out onto the field. Are they going to pick it up? No.
And it's bad when it's a hold and Johnson barely picked up two yards on that return. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm not, I'm not, sh not speaking for Coach Mitchell. But just from, from my eye, it just appears like he and this staff are tested in a way as that one is incomplete. In a way that I'm not sure he's been tested before. Um, at least as, as long as we've been here. Yeah. It's kind of different, the, the way these losses are coming for this team. Somewhat, we talked about it last week at Cerritos. Uh, myself and, and Charles Williams, who filled in for you admirably just how uncharacteristic some of these losses are. And talking to Coach Mitchell earlier today, you kind of hear some of the frustration with just the penalties and the misassignments and blown coverages. And guys not knowing which gaps to fill. Well, usually if the coach is defensive minded, usually that side of the ball is kind of taken care of. And, if, and convert, you know, conversely, at their offense, and the offense is kind of you know a little bit better ahead, but that's why I think it really frustrates because his kind of his side, his baby, his side of the ball, you know. Incomplete there, looking for Smith. It, it, it's his side of the ball, and obviously he's very frustrated with it. But not only that, I just get the sense talking to him before the season, he really liked this team, and that's not to say he doesn't like this team anymore. Um, but. I don't know that he thought this team would have two losses, let alone approaching three losses, heading into the bye week. And and we talked about it too. Uh, I think we both had a feeling Baldwin going to try to fake this one. And Long Beach is able to stop it as Baldwin tiptoes in the sideline, but he was out of bounds yeah, prior to the yard of gain, so it'll be a turnover on downs. And we, and we, last time we were here, we talked about it. The Glendale game was like, okay, well, what, what is this team? You know, are, are they, did Glendale really play that well or did Golden West just not play that great? And then they always say the biggest improvement is from week one to week two. They go up to Riverside and you could argue had the game won. Yeah. Controversial call, right? So we have a new quarterback for Long Beach, and this is Scales. We were told we were going to see him today. We were also told we were going to see him a lot earlier. Don't see him till the fourth quarter. That's because Lowry had it going. But Scales, 6'4", 210, sophomore out of River City. And you come back and take care of business against a – Chafee team that you're you're supposed to beat, right? You got to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. Yes. Cerritos it was some of some of a somewhat of a toss up, but yeah. you figured that game would go a lot differently than it did. You, you thought that the the Rustler defensive line would have a lot more success against the Cerritos offensive line that, that than they did, and that just was not the case. That wasn't how that that game worked out. And of course, we mentioned it: the penalties and the misassignments. Yeah. Um, and then you come today and you figured wrestlers were going to have to put together a game in which offense was able to put up some points. But not only that, as a team, they were able to avoid some of those mistakes that have plagued them so far this year. They weren't able to do that. Scale sends a man in motion, going to keep it himself. And he is a threat to run. And there he goes across the 30 and down at the 29. I know. Off the air for the game, you and I had a brief discussion. You said that you hoped the game didn't get out of, out of control. You know what I mean? And uh, and I said I was uh, could be a pretty good game, but uh, the numbers backed up uh, the Vikings here. So I mean, you look at them: 47 points a game, 517 yards per game of total offense, 175 on the ground, 342 through the air. These are their averages coming into to today's game as a team. And those numbers are all either second or third in their 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 conference. They're playing the same conference with 
El Camino, who's just lighting up Southern California right now. Numbers they're putting up are just ridiculous. And then also, of course, Riverside, who by unconventional means is, is being able to get things done. They're averaging close to 300 yards a game on the ground this season. So once they get to league, it's going to be uh, very, very interesting as we have a stoppage and play here. arguing about something here. Illegal shift or substitution in practice. Referee's still going to call the game, right? Whether it's a blowout or not. Or... Nice tackle for loss made there. Rudy San Jose. Eighteen games on the slate in the SCFA today. A couple have gone final already. West LA defeating Glendale 21 to 13. Antelope Valley knocked off Mount San Jacinto 31 to 7. At the half, San Bernardino Valley leads Hancock by one, 17 to 16. Our game here in the fourth quarter has been all Long Beach, and here comes Steven Scales, the backup quarterback. Running it like a tailback, and he gets a first down and more at the 26-yard line. Oh, check that. It's a fourth down. Pardon me. That was the wrong uh, chain I was looking at. He's not scaling the wall. He's scaling the defense for first downs, right? <laughs> fourth Dang. down. Offense stays on the field. You like this call? Yeah, I do. Even with the score? You got to win the clock. You're just trying to, you're not, to score. to run the clock down. And you're trying to get you're trying to get your quarter your second string quarterback some live bullets as they say, right? So it's kind of in that weird area though. I mean if you kick a field goal here, it's like, oh, what do you run up the score? It's a pass incomplete, so it'll be a turnover on downs. Elsewhere around the SCFA today, San Diego Mesa visits Pierce. Fullerton, as we mentioned, visits Moore Park at 6 o'clock. You can hear that right here on SportsNetUSA.net. Saddleback will be at Ventura. Citrus at San Diego Southwestern. Pasadena City at Compton. SMC will be at LA Harbor. Santa Barbara will be at College of the Desert tonight. Chafee will take on Palomar at Escondido High. ELAC will host Santa Ana. Elko, we just mentioned them. They'll be out in Bakersfield. That's a big top 10 matchup. We've got number 6 taking on number 7. That should be an interesting game. A lot of eyes will be on that one out in Bakersfield tonight. OCC will be at Mount Sac. LA Valley on the road at Victor Valley. And Cerritos will be at home hosting RCC. Those are all 6 p.m. kickoffs, minus the Cerritos game. They kick off at 7. Be the last game of the night. That's real game's gonna be a good game. RCC coming down here come down here. Yeah. Down here. Hooks are incomplete. Smith, but there's gonna be a pass interference. Actually hit him in the back. So hit, hit on him, him like number, a blank Craig to fool. Wrapped draped all over him. Wow. When you tell a quarterback hit him in the numbers, you don't mean in the back number, you need the number in front of him. Defenders spun around apparently. And I'm gonna let you play. I'm gonna let you play head coach right now. Obviously, with the bye week coming up, you give the guys a couple of days off. But how tough are you on them during this bye week? Do you give them 
the standard amount of days off. You know, where maybe you have a light walkthrough on a, a Wednesday or a Thursday or so, or do you really get after it during this bye week? What, 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 what does Andrew King do as the head coach? You got to fix the penalties. You got to get them, but uh, the team itself has to come together. I would, I mean, I don't know how a coach can encourage a team to have a, a players only meeting. Hopefully that leadership would do that. Maybe ask the leadership to do that. Tell the players to figure out what kind of team they want to be going into conference. What team do they want to be and let him know and then he'll coach that team. Books are too high for the intended wide receiver, Mouton. And what I mean by that is, when I, when I was in boot camp, my, my RDC or my drill instructor, whatever, told us the same thing. He had a, We talked amongst ourselves, and we decided what we wanted to be. We wanted to try to be the best division we could be, and, uh, and he worked this. And so the team needs to answer him so he knows how to coach them, because obviously there's, an, there's a miscommunication between what team he thinks they are and what team they are. But right now, you know what I mean? They got to get on the same page. So the players will tell him, okay, we, we're this kind of team. We, we, we aspire to do this. Okay, fine. I'm going to coach you to that. I mean, he's going to coach to win and all that other stuff, but kind of lay it on the players. You, you understand what I'm saying? Put it on the players. Okay, guys, you guys are grown men. What kind of team do you guys want to be? Because that's the team I'm going to coach. I'm going to, I'm going to coach you to win, but you guys have to will yourselves to, to, to be the team you want to be. You know what I mean? Fourth that, and three for the Russers. Ratzliff with that third down grab short of the sticks. that making sense to you? Yeah, it, no, it absolutely makes a ton of sense, but, but do you – do you beat it, beat him over the head with it? Incomplete by Book, so let me a turnover on downs. So you beat him over the head with it, or, or do you kind of let it let it breathe a little bit, realizing you got the second and most important half of your season coming up? Win, lose, or draw, he always gathers them on the 40 or 30 yard line. He talks to them, and that's when he needs to tell them, okay, guys, what you know. And then it has to go based on his experience of having different teams and leadership. You have, I'm sure, he has the captains or whatever i know it's not the nfl or what big time college but it's still you still have leadership on, on a team right any kind of function you have you know, kind of sport you have you have leadership so he needs to talk to his leadership and talk to the coaches and get on i mean to get on him not to get on him, it's kind of a feel thing it's kind of up to the coach me i i think that uh he needs to get on him about penalties i don't know what he can do about that and i i would i wouldn't say wholesale changes on, but bring some guys up let some twos play Put some put some ones on notice. You know what I mean. Put the ones on notice. Hey, your job's not not you know, uh, you know it's in dry erase marker. It's not you know locked in cement you know, or stone. You know. Oh come on. It's been chippy. Pretty much the majority of this. One. Some movement up front oh, against really? Long Beach City. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to call it all the way. If there's a second on the clock, we're going to call the game. Well, I guess you have to. I mean, it was late. You almost got to call that one, right? But, you know, the, ref the referees are being evaluated, too. You know what I mean? So they got to call the game all the way through, regardless of a close game or kind of out of hand, obviously. So. Six seconds left in this one after that penalty. Or they could call timeout, but they're not going to, of course. It's going to be a happy bus ride up the 405. Oh, Vikings don't even have to get a playoff. For Long Beach City. Golden West, meanwhile... Lick their wounds after falling two, two, and three. We'll step aside. We'll wrap this one up with some final thoughts. You're watching Wrestler Football right here on SportsNetUSA.net.
Welcome back to Golden West Field. Rustlers taking one on the chin here this afternoon. 52-24, our final score. They did put up 384 yards of total offense, so that perhaps a silver lining going into the bye week. They gave up 477. However, that is well below Long Beach City's average, so you want to take some positives out of this one, of course. The two pick sixes in the second half didn't do them any favors and addition, in addition to the penalties. Grant Lowry, 371 yards, three touchdowns today for Long Beach City, who were just spectacular. As I bring in my partner, Andrew King. And Andrew, before we get out of here, one last time before you get into the bye week, Coach Mitchell's huddling his guys up between the 40 and the 30 like you, or right around the 30 like you, you mentioned before we went to break the tone, the mood that has to be set in that huddle right now is? He just needs to tell them. I mean, uh, like I said, it's a gut thing, but I, I'm i looking at it right now. I was like trying to trying to imagine what he's saying, uh, talking to his team. It doesn't seem like he's really upset. Like he's not yelling at him. He's not going off on him. So I think he's giving him a, a stern talking, but I don't think he's, you know, going off the deep end. He just needs to tell them composure, composure, and, and, and play your assignments and know your assignments. You can't play them unless you know them. And, and I'm sure he's putting some of the stuff back on him and the coaches as well. Being the man that he is, he's putting the stuff on him because maybe he's not doing something to prepare them. I, I don't know if that's the case, but you no, know, like I said, knowing the man, I think he's you know he's got to say some of this has to lie on, uh, you know, go up on his uh, lie up on his shoulders. So uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if you want to. Uh, be real hard with the team, or real—I wouldn't say soft with them, but I mean, yeah, you got to bring them in. You got to uh, do all the normal things you do. I think you just do a, nor a nor win, lose, or draw. I think you just do the normal things you would do, and uh, maybe do a little more listening. Ask them questions. What what am I not communicating with you guys that you guys need to know? I mean, is it is it comp too? Com and I'm not putting anyone down. Is it too comp too complex, complicated, whatever it is? Let's work. Let's make it simplify if we have to, and make it uh, easier for everyone to be on the same page here. Like you said, having young linebackers, that's the middle of your defense, basically, as far as levels. That's your second level, and that's very important because not only do they help with the defensive line, they help with the secondary as well. So that's kind of your bridge between your front line and your back line. So that's really important there. So like, and another thing, like I said, is bring the twos up. Let some ones know, starters know, hey, you know, not everything, not every, not, not your, your uh, starting job's not uh, written in stone here. You know, other pe people on the team, want, the hungriest player is going to play. Enjoy the bye week, brother. I will. Rustlers will take a bye. Not going to get any easier. It'll be nearly a month before they return back home. They're not back here at Golden West Field until October 28th. That will be the bell game. Special thanks to Ben Olagi, outreach specialist who joined us at the half. Also, special thanks to head coach Nick Mitchell and Brett Peabody for the Long Beach City Vikings for their help throughout the week. Special thanks also out there to you for listening. Rustlers fall 52 to 24 with the loss. They fought a two and three on the season. Meanwhile, Long Beach City improves to three and two. Four. Our producer director Ed Ford, Vivian Vu on camera, and my broadcast partner Andrew King. I'm Rashawn Haylock saying good afternoon from Huntington Beach. Rustlers lose at 52 24. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. But for now, good afternoon from Huntington Beach as you've been watching. Golden West Western Football right here on sportsnetusa.net. Box combo, please. At Raisin Cane's, we're all about quality. We mix cane sauce in our restaurants every day. And our chicken is hand battered and cooked to order. Our Texas toast is grilled with just the right amount of butter and garlic. And our lemonade is always freshly squeezed. Love the window. And why do we do all this? because it makes a difference. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love.